scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Lord, you are glorious, fearful in praises. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the worship. Lord, I thank you for that which you will do tonight to the glory of your name. Thank you because you will heal the sick. Thank you because you will liberate men from the bondage of darkness. Thank you because your word will come with power. It will cause us to rise beyond our present levels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just pray in one minute and say, Lord, affect my life in a powerful way tonight. Please make sure you pray. Affect my life in a very powerful way. In a very powerful way. I have come inside and outside. The Holy Ghost is everywhere. Say, Lord, affect my life in a very powerful way. Make sure you are praying. Lambrada kabala daba shata para daba. Lambrete ke para daba la daba kata prata keshe de balara. Kampo shata bala kapris kabala kariya daba la daba ski branda kariya da. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Say, Lord, let Your Word come with fire. Pray in the spirit as you open up your heart. My heart is open. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I'll never remain the same. I'll never remain the same. After this meeting tonight, change me. Give me an encounter. Affect my life. Breathe on me. As I look to you for life, affect my life, breathe on me. As I look to you for life, affect my life, breathe on me. Sing it from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. Sing it from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. As I 
Tonight, take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. When you are in the presence of God, it's important to be conscious that not only is the Holy Ghost a person, there is an atmosphere. Are you listening to me? It's, it's not just the presence of a personality. There is an atmosphere. And whoever is within the circumference of that atmosphere is able to tap into the things of the spirit. It's not just a personality. It's an atmosphere that words cannot explain. That's the atmosphere that creates miracles. It's the atmosphere that releases power. It's the atmosphere that brings wisdom. It's the atmosphere that causes the word of God to come alive. It's not just about the English. It's not just a, pre a person. There is an atmosphere. That's why we invoke his presence in worship. It's an atmosphere. So every time you are in his presence, the Bible says now, the Lord is that spirit. And where that spirit of the Lord is, any circumference where that spirit of the Lord is there is liberty he said and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of God as in a mirror he says we are changed now arise O Lord come to your resting place you and the ark of your might then we will rejoice as we're crowned in your righteousness celebrate hallelujah he's changing everything in obedience to Christ 
It's in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. He's bringing every sick body in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. Say, so He's bringing my life in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. Lives in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't plan to teach along the area of healing. Praise the Lord. But right from when I was outside, as I stepped in, many times. I know that God heals people by the presence of angels. But then I just discerned that the Lord was going to heal and to bless and to touch people. Hallelujah. And to grant a quickening. And while I sat down quietly there, while I was about to come up, Jangfa was just telling me how that he saw the angel of the Lord to heal, to bless. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. With all humility, Kodnonia is not an ordinary service. It's, you can lose a lot of things when you are not sensitive in the spirit. Every time you come here, many things are happening at the same time. Impartation, wisdom, doors are being opened, others are being shut, destinies are transformed graces and anointings are coming upon people so you must be conscious don't just come sitting in a no this is not your church service on sunday so don't just come if you are sick here don't don't just sit down wondering oh can i be healed no i'm telling you even if we are teaching on relationship the holy ghost responds to the hunger of his people so every time you are coming, the Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. He said, for he that cometh unto God. You came here barren, we can be talking about something. And the Holy Ghost just walks up to you and says, you are too hungry for me to leave you the way you came. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to be conscious of the presence of healing angels. I'm not just talking about emotional healing. Real healing. And when you hear words like this, when they are declared, they activate the manifestation of the angelic. Because that's what God wants to do. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth as it is seen in the heavens. And so when you declare that which God wants to do in the earth, it permits the activities of angels. For the Bible says, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You don't come here with burdens and be wondering, will God lift them? Are you joking? God is mighty. God is able. You get information. You get revelation. The Bible says rule in the midst of your enemies, not in their absence. It takes light. I've shared it again and again. The Bible says, and God made many lights, but there were two great lights. One light empowered men to rule in the day and another empowered men to rule in the night. And if that light enters you, you will rule both in the day and in the night. The Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. They grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course. Have I not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like men and fall like one of these princes. So don't just come for the service wandering around being distracted. Let your spirit be focused because the Holy Ghost is everywhere to bless. In one night, the Lord can turn your story. In one night, you may be in the crowd there, but an anointing, see, let me tell you, he said, I have found my servant David. He didn't tell us where he found him. I have found my servant. Many years ago, when I go for meetings like this, lost in the crowd, 
the preacher will just be talking as I'm talking now and many people were just joking but I believed I said Lord I'm that person that preacher is talking about today you see the fulfillment of the word some of you will hear and just be laughing take seriously every time God is not doing the same thing I tell you there is enough grace and power and if you catch this grace you will run with the spirit of Elijah see there is an anointing there is a revelation that can cause a man to arise to a place of grace I pray that God will help you see my heart as I preach there is you can catch a fire you can catch knowledge you can catch insight it's of the Holy Ghost it's not of men it's an auction it flows from the depth the fountain your spirit is deeper than your body looks I tell you if you allow the life of God to touch that fountain no matter who you are no matter how weak you are he said weak men came to David to the cave of Adullam they came to the cave he produced warriors out of them one of them became powerful he killed mighty men that the sword cleaved to his hands it's by the power of the Holy Ghost everything you see in this place is an unction he said it's not about trial and error he said, you have an unction from the Holy One. Peter said, such as I have. A man can know he has something. Such, if you don't have it, you don't have it. There is no guesswork. This is not mental manipulation. This is walking under an open heavens. There is a dimension of walk with the Spirit that you can have. And this is what we seek for your spirit to contact. I pray that God will open my heart for you to understand how that I desire that these secret things that belong to God be communicated unto you I tell you you will break barriers you will shatter limits you will walk like a God upon the earth he said have I not said ye are God I challenge your spirit tonight there's more God can do with you this is not the best there's more he can do if you will give him your attention if you will take serious you don't need to be great he can take you as you are you don't need to be inside you may be outside he can take hold of your life forget about the little you know or you don't know just open your heart say Lord I don't know and I humble myself change me and the power of the Holy Ghost will pick you in a flight in the spirit and when he's done with you you will be nothing short of a wonder that's what he did with our lives Lord let none of our services ever be ordinary Hallelujah. See, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If I had the opportunity to hear what many of you are hearing many years in my life, I promise you, I would have been ten times greater than I am today. The Bible says they had the word just like we did. If you don't receive the word and pay attention you will pay for it tomorrow every day it gets harder the Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of God was cast it will not always be at a platter of gold a day will come you will have to trade a lot of things for it get it now he said do not wisdom cry crying in the city for as many who will desire her he said get wisdom get understanding exalt her and she will promote you a crown of glory an ornament of glory she will bring upon thy head when thou dost embrace her he said wisdom is the principal thing dear forget wisdom he said the labor of the fool where yet him not because there is no way he does not know the way to the city
Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Let's save time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2. We have to run. I want us to finish early today. Thank you, Jesus. Never take for granted what you are receiving. Many of you get so familiar. But I commend as many of you who come every week with a hunger. Because you know that God is doing something in your life. One of the mysteries that will never stop amazing me is how God can turn an ordinary man into a sign and a wonder. Listen, brothers and sisters, if it were by qualification, some of us would not be in ministry. Hallelujah. But God knows how to take the foolish things and the basest of all things. That's what he's doing with your life. Hallelujah. If you, if you don't study what God is doing in your life, you will not even notice you are growing. Hallelujah. And for many of you, you will get to a point in your life where you will not have the luxury to sit down like this again. The Bible says the angel tapped Elijah. He said, eat for the journey is far. He ate and he slept again. The angel tapped him. He said, you don't know how far you are going. Eat. And the Bible says when he ate, he went in the strength of that bread. 40 days journey. In other words, there are some of you that what you are receiving now in your spirit, you will get to positions where people cannot access you easily. You will get so busy serving the nation or doing that which God has called you to do. You will not have any time. But in your secret heart, some of you, the Holy Ghost will replace some of these messages. You will hear it again. When you want to treat people in a wrong way, God will say, remember. The kingdom series will begin to ring in your mind. Many of you may not notice what the Holy Ghost is doing. But let me tell you something, friends. Paul speaking to his son Timothy in the gospel, he said, meditate on these things. He said, give yourself wholly to them eventually your profiting will appear unto all hallelujah when you sow a seed and you pour water sometimes it will take a while you may not know that something is happening one day you will wake up in the morning and suddenly you will see a sign that there is growth a few years after you will look at that same tree and many will come to find shelter this is the mystery of the spiritual man that you start small small in the kingdom at any level you can be received you can start small let there be a determination in your heart that every time I come for koinonia listen if you stop getting blessed stop coming don't waste your time I'm telling you, you won't go to hell. But you do something else with your time. Hallelujah. We are very serious about what God has given us. That's why we don't have time for unnecessary jokes. We get to the business of the day. Because we know that there are certain destinies if God does not step in, Satan will make a shipwreck of them. There are many of you who are coming here with situations that are a matter of life and death. We cannot be joking. Hallelujah. I want us to hurry up. I promised us that we'll try to maintain the time. Koinonia is not the kind of meeting that you can do in two or three hours. Hallelujah. I wish we had an auditorium of our own old meetings. It's a, it's a lot. It's, see, these are spiritual syllables we are covering. Are you following me now? And sometimes when I see that which God wants to bring... We are lagging behind. We meet only once in a week. Take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Even if we met three or four times in a week, it will not be enough. I'm telling you. 
if you know the urgency of what God wants to make out of your life, you will make the, he said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, Lord, there is only one Lord in this place. It's not Joshua Selman. It's not any minister, but the King of Kings. We only live to serve your majesty. Let every pride be nailed to the cross. Let every tendency for vain glory be nailed to the cross. We are not ashamed to declare that we are your servants. Tonight, Lord, I pray that you move through me and bless your people. Our hearts are opened. In the name of Jesus, break every pride, break every flesh, break every tendency of the human spirit and soul to interrupt that which you want to do. Let your people be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians 2.10 tonight, I want you to listen very carefully. There are not many messages I tell people to listen to. But tonight's message will bless you. I'm sharing tonight on the price for a glorious destiny. The price for a glorious destiny. I know that we have one more one more session to cover for the full gospel series but we'll take that another time be conscious of the presence of God as we minister Ephesians 2 verse 10 quickly anybody thank you Jesus have you wondered why please look up have you wondered why in life certain people emerge so victorious glorious with enviable destinies hallelujah while others live as failures in life hallelujah i've always wondered is it that god made some people failures is it that some people were destined to be failures hallelujah while the world is celebrating the investments of God in others, other people just joy, they are at the lower levels of life. They make no impact. They don't live out why they were born. Tonight, I pray that this message will challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The price for a glorious destiny. Write this down. The word destiny. Write destiny. Please make sure next time when you're coming, you hold something to write with. If, you, if your neighbor is not writing, you can help them, please. The paper, biro, just share with someone. Or if you have a phone, you can use your notepad or something. Or if you can just have it, no problem. You can get the teaching later. Destiny. Now, the word destiny is an interesting word. It means a predetermined future. Very simply. The word destiny means... A future that has been predetermined. Hallelujah. A future that has been predetermined. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Anyone? Yes, please. Very loud. For we are his workmanship. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Unto good works. Which God had before ordained. Which God had before ordained. That we should walk that in them. That we should walk in them. Thank you, sir. He said, for we are what? His workmanship. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. That we should walk unto good works. To walk in a path that has been foreordained. He told Jeremiah in chapter 1. He said right from when you were in your mother's womb. I knew you, formed you, called you, ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says. For I the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord. He said they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to what? an expected end that means i had an expectation hallelujah are you listening to me so the word destiny this is so important the word destiny means a predetermined future predetermined by who god god the bible says we existed in god in eternity 
Hallelujah. This is very, very important. Many people do not live to hear these kinds of teachings. And they become failures in life. They are being born again, notwithstanding. I'd like you to say after me, I have a destiny. Say it. Say, I have a destiny. Say it confidently. I have a destiny. Say, I was born for a reason. Let's see some facts about destiny clear. Number one, facts about destiny. Every man was born for a reason. Every man, this is the first point I want you to know tonight. Every man, those who serve the great and the great, every man, according to God's predeterminate counsel, every man was born for a reason. I don't care how you came whether it was as a result of one harlot meeting another man is irrelevant hallelujah one more time say i have a destiny what you are saying is i have a predetermined future say i'm not a biological accident i know many of you are used to it. just say it we are going on a journey tonight every man was born for a reason your purpose for existence is the problem you were created to solve. The solution that God put in you to reveal to your world. Your purpose in life. What problem were you created to solve? What solution? Look around the world. We are benefiting from solutions that have been provided to mankind. Men and women walked upon the earth in ministry in every area of life and they offered solutions to their generations. What generation are you for? Are you getting blessed tonight? So, number one, every man was born for a reason. Debunk that demonic statement that you do not have a destiny. I don't care what has happened to you. I don't care what Satan has told you. Can I tell you something? Even the herbalists and the native doctors and those who sell their soul to the devil have a destiny and a purpose in Christ. Hallelujah. Fact number two. Your destiny has been predetermined by God. Your destiny is not an ambition. Your destiny is not an ambition. An ambition is a desire, a craving of something or someone you want to become that's not destiny your destiny has been predetermined listen to me but it takes your choices and decisions to enter into it or lose it your destiny has been predetermined by God but it is a sum total of your choices in life and the decisions that you take. He said, I set before thee this day. Blessing and cursing. Life and death. But here's my advice. He said what? Choose life. Choose life. So that you may live. Fact number three. Destiny can be aborted. This is the painful thing about destiny. Destiny destiny can be aborted in other words god can earmark someone's life and the man comes here on earth spends 70 years 80 years even a hundred years or more and not locate his destiny at all not even leave it may god forbid that any one of us will just walk through the earth and be a liability to this generation hallelujah destiny is an important thing listen let me tell you something when you find your place in destiny that's where your blessing is that's where your relevant is there is no competition it's a realm that only you exist you see the reason why many people fight tear themselves do everything they do not even know that they have a predetermined future and if they do they don't even know how to get there and tonight my job is to guide us into not just an understanding but an experiential walking the price i made up my mind long time ago that my generation will hear my voice 
when I said that you were not there when I said that nobody was there but today by the grace of God hallelujah when you hear certain names Billy Graham Dr. Miles Munro Mike Mudok Bishop Oyedeko Obama hallelujah when you hear certain names they are associated with greatness these were men who who grew in all kinds of unfavorable conditions hallelujah men and women who shook their generations read through the bible run from genesis to revelation moses abraham isaac jacob joshua the prophets jesus himself paul the apostle every time you hear this name you tag an aspect of greatness i pray that tomorrow your name will be associated to greatness the bible says we have been preordained by god please listen so why why do people end up becoming failures in life i asked the lord this question and i was shocked he gave me only two reasons why do people end up becoming failures in life someone who was destined to be a great apostle a great prophet a great teacher a great evangelist how come a man can have such a beautiful predetermined destiny and not even leave it do you realize that there was a prophetic grace upon Jacob? He never used it. He never worked with it. It was until he was at the point of death, he began to bless his children. And you hear the prophecy that came out of him. This was, this was a grace and an unction that he would have used in his youth. Hmm. Hallelujah. Have you not heard of people who at age 80 or 70, they finally give their heart to the Lord. And within the remaining time, they begin to put pressure on destiny listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life lamentations 327 he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth it is good that a man bear his yoke in other words the bible says the glory of the young man is his strength pay the price now don't pay the price when you do not have strength again why people including christians end up becoming failures in life number one i want you to listen with an open heart number one excuses please write it quickly and look up because i want to talk about it excuses this is the number one reason why many people become failures in life and i don't want you to be victims of that excuses we live in a world where many people many people believe that their success depends on others and not themselves hallelujah there are many angry people around the world in africa in nigeria giving all kinds of ridiculous excuses why god cannot use them excuses why they are drinking and smoking excuses why their lives are the way they are excuses not taking responsibility for their lives let me show you an interesting scripture proverbs 20 verse 4 proverbs 20 verse 4 let's hurry up i want this i want this word to enter your spirit tonight proverbs 20 verse 4 anyone yes sir 20 verse 4 the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold he said the sluggard will not plow the land why what is his excuse he said there is cold therefore shall he beg in harvest therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing and have nothing this is talking about um, fruitfulness but this applies to every area of life he said the sluggard will refuse to plow the land what is his excuse help me please there is cold there are so many people who have given useless excuses why they are the way they are and in Nigeria we have so many of these people 
A lot of youths are angry with the government and say in America, once you are 18, they give you money. And now they are saying, if they were helping me, my life would have changed. And because of that, you move on being a failure in life. And when they ask you why, this is your excuse. Are you listening to me? There are many people that have given all kinds of excuses. My father is an irresponsible man. If my father was as responsible as other people, do you think I'll be where I am? Now that you know, what are you doing about it? Hallelujah. I used to live a bad life sleeping around. Now that you know, what are you doing about it? Are you following me now? There are so many people. It's easy to pass the blame of your life to other people. There are many of us still holding our parents, fathers, mothers, and different people. My father cursed me. That's why I'm not moving. Oh, you are aware. Have you taken any step? What are you doing about it? Are you listening to me, please? I came from a polygamous family. They didn't treat me well. It's not a lie. But what are you doing about it? Are you going to allow your destiny to be at the mercy of all kinds of excuses? Jesus came from Nazareth. Hallelujah. An innocent child. Suddenly Herod finds him to kill him. He would have gotten angry and said, Father, please take me back. Look at this nonsense. I'm coming to help people who are sinners. And you're not even encouraging my journey. You want to kill me. It's amazing. Ask many people why they are not advancing in life. They will start crying. And they will start telling you stories of yesteryears. There was a guy when I was four years old. The guy abused me. And that's the reason why every time I see men or women, I, I have an, an uncontrolled desire. My brother and my sister, how many years or decades has that been? What are you doing about it? Are you listening to me? Someone insulted me and told me I'll never be anything. So every time people talk to me, and now we have all kinds of psychological teachings that encourage us to live in that realm. They say, you see, mankind is a, our complexity as men. There are certain subconscious things that remain. And when it comes, you are hurt. You are emotionally hurt. Your heart is down. Look, get up and move on with your destiny. You know, some of us get into situations and we give excuses. Wait until you hear the story of someone and the things they survive to come out. You will see that you have no excuse. For Solomon told us that there is nothing that has happened in the earth that is happening for the first time. Are you listening to me? Say, I refuse to give excuses. Oh, I, my father took me to a school where we sat down on stones. That's why my jam result have been suffering now. You can imagine this wicked man. You drink this thing. We sat on stones. They used chalk. My brother and my sister. Now that you are responsible for your destiny, what have you done by yourself? Hallelujah. When Kofi Annan was the Secretary General of the United Nations, he made a statement on Children's Day. He said, let the children not suffer the consequences of the carelessness of their parents. Hallelujah. When I heard that statement, I appreciated it on one side, but on another side, it didn't make sense to me. Because it is true that you cannot change other people. So the only way to move forward is to change yourself. Are you listening to me? Excuses. Several people give excuses. Oh, my father was this. See, let me tell you something. I'm not saying your excuses are not legitimate. They are. But for as long as you allow Satan to keep bringing that as a reason, you will remain there forever. There are people in this place who lost their loved ones, lost their fathers, their mothers when they were growing up. There are several people who were under some hostile environments. There are several of you who were involved in witchcraft and divination. It's not your fault. You grew up into it. Hallelujah. My father's mother was a traditional worshiper. Am I? If, if I add what I'm doing now with small tradition, the day they catch me, I say, uh -huh, why wouldn't I do it? You know, you watch people and see the excuses they give on TV. They catch a senator looting money and then he brings a flimsy 
and stupid excuse. He says, am I the only one? They should go and ask, what happened to our foreign reserve? What has that got to do with what you did now? Every time, every time you are convicted, the, the thing for people is to look for excuse. You pour water here and ask people, who did this? What will people say? It's not me. But what, is it not affecting all of us? Say it's not me. That mindset is what I want to remove this night. Hallelujah. For let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, the great in life, are men who have come out of unbelievable excuses are you listening to me all kinds of excuses they have the have, i i read a lot about successful people because the bible says that he who dwells among the wise will be wise ministers people in government politics the corporate world i study about their lives and i'm telling you you cannot imagine what some of them had to endure a man called William Seymour, the pioneer of the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, sorry, not the Bible, history tells us that the founder, the one who brought in the Azusa Street Revival, he had one eye. One eye. Hallelujah. There are many of us who right now, you are you are there is annoyance and grief in your spirit with the government of nigeria with your families say my brother is because they were sponsoring him to school that's why i didn't go to school okay now you didn't go to school and then your brother maybe ended up becoming an arm robber and forever every time you see him say this is the demon that swallowed up my destiny People give all kinds of excuses. The Bible says, Go to the ants, you sluggard, and learn a very powerful lesson. They take about 50 times their weight. They have never given excuse and say, God, why didn't you increase our size? Seeing that we are this hardworking. They are able to coordinate themselves. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you do not stop giving excuses in your life, I promise you, you will live a life of bitterness and regret. You will initiate your children. You watch some people in the television and see how your parents frown at them. Say, ah, Mr. H. Then they just, he said, ah, daddy, what happened? Say, this guy, I remember how many years the guy has gone for, they are interviewing him in, on TV. The guy is happy. Your father is here. You are saying, okay, so how about our own life? Say, are you not hearing what I'm saying? No, you just add, you just pass the anger to people. There are people who are perpetually angry. You ask them, why? Why should I be happy? Are you not seeing what is going on in the world? Can you imagine Obama? He doesn't know you. You are dying there. Good luck, Jonathan. God punish him. He didn't hear it. Listen, I'm telling you something. Get out of this thing. The visit of Abu, stupid man. He doesn't know you. You are not living in his house. You see the house he's living in. You are there angry. Oh, this is my stupid lecturer. God will punish him. Yet, the semester just started. You are going to see him as many times. And you can't drive him away. Listen, let me tell you something if you don't stop give, while you are laughing i hope you are getting this this is a very serious issue hallelujah excuses the bible do you know the bible says he gave unto men matthew 25 five talent two talent and what one what was the excuse of the last one he said i know you are a hard man so that was his observation all through that period while his other colleagues were making use of destiny he was there saying i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did so There are many of us who are here with our destiny. See, I cannot speak English. If God only made me finer than I am now, God, you said you didn't try. Eh? What is the meaning of all this nonsense? Oh God, if I had done this, if only I could speak like that guy. If only I could write. God, if you just if you had given me this guy's charisma, what the books I would have written by now. You think the people were born like that? 
See, what you do not know is that every successful man started somewhere. We are used to studying people's results, not their history. Hallelujah. So you see a man drops outside with a Jeep Lincoln and say, hey, sand youths moving for the advocacy of employment. What is that? And they gather themselves, they fight over secretary, they fight over something, and they write a petition. They say, we want to see the presidency. And you want to they get there and say, sir, on behalf of the youth in Nigeria we are speaking, why are there no jobs? Legal ways of living. You are just hoping that one day your father will just call you and say, now son, I've waited all these years to tell you that there's one secret inheritance that I've kept because you watched it in the Nigerian film. Now your father is getting older. You didn't hear anything. You didn't hear anything. Later your father will call you and say, oh boy, do and get out of my household. Then it dawns on you that there's really nothing for you. Then you start getting bitter. The Bible says children are, are supposed to enjoy inheritance from the parents. Now that it didn't happen, what are you doing about it? You are there grumbling, writing books and articles, petitioning your parents. See, let me tell you something. I want you to make a determination tonight that you're going to take hold of your destiny. Are you listening to me? You can't cry forever. You've got to brace up, wipe your tears and move. Yes, the man slept with you when you were growing up. Yes, all kinds of things happened. Your uncle abused you. Yes, this and that happened. Yes, somebody broke your heart. Yes, somebody did this. Yes, the brother came into your life and swore heaven and hell and told you Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and left you. Yes, this and that happened. But what are you going to do today? Are you listening to me? Many people give excuses. Oh, it's cold. So you won't plow the land. You just ask people why they are. I have not sampled 12 people. Ask them why they are in this level of life. Only about one in those 12 will take responsibility. And, chose to take any. and most of the people who make that decision are usually bad, bad drunkards and the rest. You go and ask drunkards and smokers. They'll open up. They'll tell you truly, oh, I'm responsible for where I am now. But go and ask Christians. Didn't I pray that day? Even my seed I gave. Like I'm, I'm watching God. The day will come when I would. You can imagine. I brought someone to Koinonia. Now see the person growing. Doors are opening. God, let me tell you. If you are not going to do this, I will backslide. I will do this and that. And they ask you. They say, okay, why are you not consistent with God now? You say, when, when he doesn't solve my problem, won't I go? Who is suffering? Tonight is the night when you open up yourself and say, listen, I don't care from where I'm starting, but I will not end there. Are you listening to me? Say in the name of Jesus, I will not end where I am. Say it like you believe it, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. I will not end where I am. There's more about my life. I'm telling you, believe it. You wait and hear the stories of all kinds of people. And the things that they went through. People who trusted God at dead beds. Others even died and came back to life. And made up their minds. Hallelujah. There are people today. Look at the man Job. If there's anybody who should be discouraged about destiny, it should be a man, Job. He got to a point, in one day, your children, dead. Cattles, dead. Everything, dead. And then boils grow on your body again. To the point that dogs come and they are licking it. Imagine your father, sitting naked, using ashes. The Bible said he sat upon ashes. This was somebody who was talked about. Yet Job said, though he slay me, Yet will I praise him. The wife said, Job, I love you. We had all these children with you. And right now, I must tell you that I'm tired. Job said, why are you speaking like one of these foolish women? And the Bible says at the end of his life, he refused excuses. Can I tell you something? Great people are those who do what weak people refuse to do. They, they break through all kinds of things. Excuses. Oh, we come from this tribe. 
our tribe they, we are always known for this there are all kinds of people giving useless excuses the people from our tribe Zev, they know us in our tribe as dollars Jale. Although, do everyone if they you just call our tribe what are you going to do about it with all the word you are hearing we like women in our village it's a cause oh, everybody has it who doesn't have it please now that the word is entering your spirit is it doing anything us in our place where so women that work the job of the man is to go and get children and allow everybody what are you doing about it when they went with the prophet the bible says the axe head fell inside the ground they would have said Toh, prophet at least you saw what we were doing before the axe head they said no prophet come many of you I'm telling you this God asked me to preach this message there are many of you that need to release your parents especially your father left you to your mother alone yes you struggled your father is enjoying in maybe UK or abroad or anywhere and you are here suffering what are you going to do about it do you know you sit down there before you know it you will look around and see four children and you are sitting in the parlor with them narrating the same story that you didn't do anything about the children said daddy what what really why are we like this and you say sit down since you have asked i will tell you what what kind of life is that some of you may be laughing now you see some of you may be laughing now but you don't do anything about it and you see you'll be shocked in your life because it won't change automatically I made up my mind years ago that I was going to take responsibility for my life. Hallelujah. Many of you have had to miss semesters for students, sessions, maybe because one uncle who was supposed to be responsible said he will sleep with you. He no sleeping with you, no school fees. And forever you sit down and say, this uncle, oh God, miracle service, you write his, his name. Say, God, punish this man for me let his children know and we have all kinds of ridiculous woes is it do you realize that one man's failure or success does not affect your own praise the lord there are all kinds of people angry in society giving excuses go and meet our parents and they give all kinds of excuses it's true there's corruption say forget jerry if I were Yoruba, they would have promoted me now. Or if I were Igbo, they would have all this Igbo thing. Or all this northern thing. But have you made efforts? You call the person who is making noise and try to interview him. And see that this guy cannot even do anything. Instead of him to, people are building. He's not doing anything. Saying this contract. Yeah, Yoruba people, that's how they do. Or Hausa people, northerners with their stupidity. He's always like that and the person who is shot the day they give him that contract you wait and see how he will change he won't do it he will cause trouble are you ready for it no say I refuse excuses number two in fact say after me my success depends on me I take my destiny and I pay the price I pay the price I release everyone say it I release everyone and I take responsibility hallelujah number two one of the reasons why people end up becoming failures in life please never forget this for as long as you live number two violating the law of process violating the law of process you just write it i'll explain it look at one scripture quickly mark 4 28 someone help us read we have to hurry up mark 4 28 are you receiving something tonight is god speaking to someone there are some of you your brothers are 35 years 40 years they are still at home true or false you ask them why they'll see your father they'll hit themselves the day your father talked they'll say see let me tell you something when I was 26 years, remember this. Now you are 40. You marry and still carry the wife to your father's house and say, Is this house will stay? The day you give me land, I will pack out. Can you imagine? 
the, you wait and see how do you know most of family fighting is on inheritance is that true the father left land and they said this land Abba, we'll kill ourselves on this land you will see three generations fighting over the land that their great grandfather who was a king gave them they don't do anything Mark 4, 28. Please read, sir. Shall I come For the earth bringeth forth fruit of, it, of herself. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. Listen. First the blade. First, what happens? The blade. Alright? Then the ear. Then the ear. After that, the, the full corn. After that, the full corn. Stop. God bless you. It says the earth brings, but it tells you how we bring. It says first what? The blade. Followed by the ear. And then a lot of people have become failures. Please listen. Give me your ears, your heart, your eyes, everything. A lot of people have become failures in life because they do not know the law of process. This is a message that is not taught again because we're in a jet age. A generation where anything is possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 2 verse 52, it says, and Jesus grew. Say after me, and Jesus grew. The Bible didn't say Jesus became. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God. Jesus grew. The Lord grew. The Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed, hold on, time and harvest many of us read it in a rush there are three words there one is seed second is time third harvest it didn't just say seed harvest seed time harvest the law of a process many people let me tell you something this is what separate the great ones from those who are not great if I say now God will make you a great leader. Everybody will lift hands. Amen. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you. Or Jankwa gets up here and says, The Lord is showing me, my brother, that in five years you are going to become a world changer. Guys, start smiling. I say, I like Koinonia. I like this kind of thing. These are the kind of things I would like to hear. But now, when God says, let me tell you, you know the thing about God? He doesn't tell you how you will get there. He will first show you a picture of the promised land and say, let's go. Later, you will stop and say, oh, God, God said, didn't I show you? Let's go. Hallelujah. I don't watch films most of the time. But the Lord made me to watch one film called Lord of the Rings. Many of you watch film for entertainment. I got some powerful spiritual lessons about that thing. Hallelujah. I learned a lot of things. Another film I watched called Aquila and the Bee. Did you learn anything? You are saying yes. You just keep quiet and let me preach to you because many of you have watched it more than 10 times. You can say everything but you can't bring the moral lesson. Hallelujah. Someone who grew with no advantage whatsoever and became a world changer what is your excuse listen let me tell you everyone i know whether in the ministry in business in politics in government in the arts media whatever it is whatever area anyone who truly stepped into sustainable greatness went through a process are you listening to me anyone that preaches to you now we have all kinds of messages spiritual shortcut there's a pathway you can navigate in a hurry let me tell you that pathway is witchcraft yes it's witchcraft I will say it because if you follow that path let me tell you something with Satan he will give you the products now and come for his money later on oh he's a good businessman he will tell you you have it and then you join the Americans. What America is doing is, is a, a physical manifestation of what Satan does to people in the spirit. You buy your destiny on credit. 
and leave everything. So, if you were in America now, many of you would have come for Koinonia with jeeps. Once you are 18 years, they give you money. You build house on credit, marry a wife on credit, divorce her on credit, build a business on credit, and you hold on and begin to see the kind of thing you are leaving for your children. I like Nigeria. Thank God. There's nothing like a credit system in Nigeria. If you don't have it, just go back home. It's a very good system. Are you listening to me? Are you getting blessed tonight? Say, I receive gifts to go through the process. Many young people don't like this statement. Process. Once you mention process, ah, people don't like it. Hallelujah. Every time you watch jollof rice, when they finish it and package it and bring it, you start smiling. Every time we're about to eat the food that our welfare people prepared for us, sometimes I look and I just imagine, how did they do this? How did they do all of that? How the processes? You can't just lay hands on the rice and say, I invoke of the spirit hey, let this thing become rice it doesn't work that way hallelujah because that's what many people are doing some of you are doing it as you are laughing it may not be for rice but you are doing it for your destiny you are sitting down and hoping that's why many of you like teachings on favor. You are hoping. Ayah, I will enter houses I didn't build. I will marry wife I didn't ask out. I will have children I didn't. Get out of that illusion this night in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are brothers waiting for the sister to just manifest and see them. There are sisters hoping that one day they'll wake up and say, Ah, you are the one. You hold on. And watch the shocker that life brings. We like it when a generation of employment without submitting CV, everything. So we like it. The jet age that leads people into stupidity. There is something called the law of process. Let me tell you two things you need to know about the law of process. Number one, in the school of greatness, you must be tested and proven to be honored by God. If it is God, if it's your shrine or another um, demonic entity, it's okay. But if it is God, let me tell you something. You must be tried and tested. Psalm 66 verse 12. He said, thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Men rode through our heads. We went through fire through water are you listening to me behind every glory there is a story many of you are not interested in the story you just keep admiring things that will never come into your life and many of us have gone to churches where you claim you come and drop your seed and don't do anything and watch how your life will surprise you hallelujah the favor of God will never replace the law of process. Are you listening to me? So don't you think that if you can get the favor anointing, everything in your life will just happen like that. I hope you know Jesus Christ had the power to save mankind without dying. You know that in the infinite wisdom of God, there would have been a way. Why did Mary just give birth to Jesus? You just hear a child just cry, ah! Then you see a great man say, I'm in a hurry. I need to save mankind. <laughs> you give birth to a child like that and see how you will run. You just gave birth to him, he landed and just got up. Say, what's going on here? What's my destiny? What's my assignment? It doesn't happen that way. It can't happen that way. If a baby drinks one drum of breast milk, does he become a man? Answer me. You call him a healthy baby. That's what happens. If an old man fasts for 100 years and die, did you say a baby died? Who died? An old man.
the law of process has cheated many people violating this law running into realms that you have not gotten into it takes time for true success to manifest write it it takes time so you don't let anybody deceive you someone just gets his small 500 or six or seven hundred thousand just buys his golf wagon and won't let you rest comes to see the world is working in my life and you are taking things gradually but you are beginning to faint and say kai pressure is even coming from home and people are saying see now my brother just said he's a vet doctor uh, you know we live in a society that puts pressure on us you hold on and start hearing the calls that come from everywhere say we're waiting on start sending the money and now you are under all kinds of pressure left right and center it takes time for true success to manifest let me tell you what a process teaches you a process simply means the pathway to your destination or whatever you want to achieve number one a process tests your loyalty and commitment to fulfilling your destiny listen listen look at me a process will test whether you are really interested in fulfilling destiny or not oh god use me hallelujah and somebody just somebody just said uh, sorry i'm hungry and god tells you the 500 naira in your pocket that's all you have home and abroad god will say give the person say god the bible says you are telling god oh, the bible says love your neighbor as yourself not better than yourself and you are looking at god and then you say you want to be a minister oh god give me crowd like koinonia you hold on when you go through the process at the end of it you will know whether you want it or not process tests your loyalty let me tell you something if you survive a process you deserve the result are you listening to me many people don't survive it I was listening to an interview by you but angel many people say you are an exceptional prophet you are a celebrity he said I'm said I'm persecuted how can I be the celebrated you go online and see all kinds of things about him but many people will see and say I want that level of grace see uneasy lies the head that wears the crown don't don't allow success bait you too quick let the process of God screen your true desire. Success tests loyalty. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be evangelists? Everybody get up when Jake comes. Because many of you think it's just anointing and you fall down. Jake says, all right, um, every week we are going to be going on evangelism. They will start with 100 people who came out emotional, even crying, cleaning their tears. After two weeks, you may find only 10 people. Why? Because you have initiated the principle of a process. A process is what separates great people from those. It's easy to talk, but it's a process that separates people. I want to be a champion. I am somebody. And you just dance. I am somebody. If it were just to be like that, there are people who varieties of oil has come upon their head. It would have changed their life by now. Process. Process. So process helps you. It tests your loyalty. Anything you are not loyal and committed to, you will never get it at the end. Number two process builds patience impatience has cheated many people in life listen to me there's no anointing impartation hand laying for patience you are taught patience experientially the bible says in james 1 verse 3 says count it all joy my brethren when you go through several diverse um, temptations he said knowing this that the trying of your faith will produce patience he said and let patience have her full course that it will make you mature not lacking in anything patience how many of you have come to meet your father or some of your parents and while you are jumping and excited about some things they promised me visa to uk you just see your father not interested he said why uncle promise and your father is just looking as if he didn't hear you 
you have never gone through disappointment in your young and youthful life he received disappointment in 1971 somebody promised him he was going to scotland he didn't go it happened again in 1970 he has gone through too much things it has helped him to be patient you are coming happy oh and they prophesy this you know he's just looking at you two weeks later you come back and say god this is my uncle you have told your friends he told you just keep quiet first you you are too grateful to keep quiet you ran around town ran your mouth around there are some things only age can teach when you see your father keep quiet he said they promoted me but you just wait let him manifest he say what is that don't hide good things after you receive disappointments for a number of time you become grounded initiated into patience experientially hallelujah your car was not good they say let's fix it say no let's go are you joking the world is working they say let's fix this thing it can cause trouble on the road you say ah daniel said this this in the bible this this said this then you are going you stop and sleep on the road that night you call on to the god of israel you pray and sing listen to koinonia tapes nothing happens the next day when you see a zealous apostle saying let's go you see is the car working if it's not working say hold on it's not lack of faith you are you say i can wait i'm not in a hurry I, if i cannot make the first two days of the program i can make the third day i'm not in a hurry that spirit of i believe in speed we prophesied every miracle service but there is a hurry hurry that leads you to death are you listening to me run away from it you sit down you know the background you are coming from you look at your friend and say hey this girl is wearing brazilian weave on me i'm here soaking my own and washing and rinsing it every time who said you will remain like that who said you will remain like that and you are under all kinds of pressure impatience has produced arm robbers impatience has produced let me tell you most people that violate the laws of life are people who could not be patient men i, I shared it here men of god who have touched a lot of things adding to the anointing they have mixed the anointing with wine it's not that god didn't call them they said kai to wait five years we were on campus for four years meeting at the back of sunday school building every night we were being proven by god i cannot tell you the suggestions that came from different people do this do that god showed me this some even drew the diagram of what they saw and brought it i said thank god but when it was god's grace what happened he brought us to this level and we will stay on course until it pleases his majesty to open greater doors if you learn to be patient in life you will find out that your patience will make you faster than those who are running watch a driver who is running saying driver we are young people in this car let's go 180 the driver said i've been driving for the past 10 years i've had accident 10 times i'm not in a hurry we'll get to zaria you are just running one car just passes you later on you see people picking out the legs here the head of the person here and you will now say oh dear god this would have been us patience god can wait god can wait god is not in a hurry the way many people teach god can wait let's hurry up number three a process helps you to appreciate success and to honor successful people if you have not gone through a process you will never know how to appreciate success many of you take certain things that god brings to your life for granted until you go through certain processes when you come out can i tell you something as i grow in ministry every day i cultivate a deep respect for the fathers of faith who have gone ahead seeing some of the challenges that come before us in ministry and other things when you see certain fathers you just wonder what did these people endure you hear about some of them who had churches and God asked them to leave and go to Lagos and they slept on that bridge for months before they got their parishes. And so you just think. See, I learned this from Dr. Mike Modok. Celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. Don't pretend there is no greatness there. Are you listening to me? When you enter it, I shared it in, in when we we're doing the teaching on the law of honor. Whenever you see greatness, don't pretend this is not greatness. 
celebrate greatness when you enter its presence because the great are those who have endured what you could not endure they went through things where you gave up they continued the film lord of the rings again among the many scenes in that film there was one scene that i will never forget remember when a gentleman called sam he wasn't the one holding the ring are you listening to me but frodo the ring bearer got tired and he said something he said i may not be able to carry the ring but i can carry you and he carried that gentleman and started moving him and together they accomplished destiny listen to me let me tell you something successful people are those who did not give up when you gave up so celebrate greatness when you enter its presence it may be your brother it may be your sister success helps you sometimes you see people standing in anointing because you got born again and every prayer you prayed was answered you now say those who are fasting I beg Jerry. then you go through some process there are some people that if i see them doing some things i just keep quiet because we saw it happen on campus there are people who were very stubborn and they were not well behaved before but now when they see you they greet you ah every time i look at them i say you have come you have crossed that door you just see them they see you and they greet you they say sorry is there anything you think god is saying about my life they won't say that before when they see you before they'll come and push how are we colleagues in ministry when certain things went through and whip them back to order when they see you now they greet how many of you have seen people like that they used to be so rude and hostile to you we are roommates so we are this forget you may be my senior in secondary school but we are roommates now don't play with me then the day they need your help the day they make a stupid decision they will now know they are childish and they will come and you bring forth wisdom a process helps you to appreciate success some of you inherited the success you have now so you are taking it for granted you grew up with a plasma screen in your house so when somebody is giving testimony and saying we use how many of you know this kind of cd plates that are round you just hold it and touch it lightly then it starts going around that's how some people grew up but you grew up with everything some you even have gadgets that you just speak to it from your room we grew up and my parents my younger sister is here we had one beetle green beetle i learned how to drive with that beetle no alignment no nothing you are driving is going you have to bring it back but many of you grew up it was a jeep that carried you from the hospital and brought you you just grew up one day you saw yourself you saw people snapping and said daddy who is our father they say he's a commissioner or is this so you don't know how to appreciate success you trivialize a lot of things you insult your cook and say you mean this is the food you cooked and then sometimes after you go through certain processes you come back with a depth of wisdom every time you see success you appreciate it hallelujah number four process creates a memory that helps you sustain success when it comes listen this is very important the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them can i tell you why god no matter how you pray and fast there are some realms you must grow into you will never jump into them you know why because there are certain memories you need to sustain success are you listening to me look up please there are many of you here you don't know what it means to be charismatic and to be a celebrity it can be demonic are you listening to me you get to a point where men can almost worship you at that point you need the memory of the wilderness to sustain you because you can get to a point in your life people cannot even talk to you they can't access your office they can't do everything that's why today every time i stand you see when i sit down here you put see me close my eyes sometimes i just remember i say god god of israel to see where god took us and brought us by grace a process creates memory are you listening to me when you were taking pap and cocoa you buy cocoa 20 naira yam 10 naira the remaining 10 naira they should put pap half cup when you are taking and now the moment you see delicacies you will remember the bible says thou shall remember 
so while you are enjoying in the palace that's why David danced he danced before God and Saul's daughter was saying don't embarrass us he said I'm dancing before God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me people who do not you see why many politicians are reckless over spending because they did not go through a process hallelujah somebody had 50,000 home and abroad in his account you jumped into an office and you saw accounts linked to your office with no name they were not tied to your name they were tied to the office you award a contract of 10 million and somebody just brings a, a car of, of 2 million naira. say I just said you should use it as throw when you want to buy a recharge car just throw with it you say what for many people jump into success and destiny that's why they are short lived no matter what kind of prayer you pray if it is success that comes from God I assure you that door of process you must pass through it fast pray cry you must pass through it there are some cups in life that are not meant to pass you must drink it Peter said I will drink the cup he didn't even wait to hear what Jesus was saying and he truly drank it and some cups are big so I must drink everything inside I was told of a man just a story a fictional story I believe that he went to heaven was come complaining and say God which kind of useless cross are you giving me to carry like this I'm seeing people laughing I'm the only one frowning in the world then that he went to heaven and they led him into a room there were all kinds of crosses different weights and sizes and the Lord said oh yeah go and pick one by yourself so that it won't be me he saw one small one very small he just went and carried and the Lord said but that's the same thing you just, you just carried what you are complaining that's the one you were carrying on earth The guy say, you mean there are some people carrying this one? He said, and they are happy on earth. From that day, he came back with a mindset. Process. We have taught people in church that process is as a result of lack of faith or demonism or all, of, all, all kinds of things. It's not true. Do you know David was anointed king, sir? But when he was anointed king, where did he run to? Back to the wilderness. He was anointed king. He was not anointed shepherd. But he went back to the wilderness. And what happened? He grew into the throne. Hallelujah. He was, he played strings for the king. He became his armor bearer. Then he became king. I won't deceive you, brothers and sisters. There are many of you that are running too fast in life. And you are, you are soon going to have a head-on collision with disappointment. You need to pipe down, come to yourself and take life gradually. I ask some people, I say, what's your financial budget? What do you want to make per year? And they mention one stupid and ridiculous and childish figure. Whether it's, it's 10 billion or something, they say they want to be getting per month. I say, starting from now, I say, yes. <laughs> your brother is collecting 30,000. I say, me, God forbid. If it's not 250, I won't start. You hold on. Life has a beautiful way of teaching people lessons. You see someone collected that is I say me with this faith that I have now. You just wait and see. Or someone finished school and is going to teach. I say, what kind of nonsense is this? Ah, you have fallen our hands. Hold on. You are going to finish. Contagora, your convocation gown is waiting for you at Contagora Square. You will finish. And then suddenly you find out that life is not fair. As you are graduating, your uncle that says you should bring CV just says, I'm relocating to Holland. Number one, welcome to the real world. Then your father says, now I've been waiting to tell you this. You're of age. Please go and find a bus cutter or whatever. Just get out of my presence. A process helps you. It sustains an experience. How many of you have seen very wealthy people live simple lives? And you are surprised. You say, if it's me that had this money. Because you don't, never covet a man's result if you don't want his history. Never never covet a man's result that's why reading books i like reading books about people's history not just their results hallelujah they talk about johnson suleiman apostle johnson suleiman a great man many people see him today do you know that this guy i hear was one who was cleaning the shoes of idahosa and doing a lot of things Janfa was telling me how that there was a time someone fell down when the house was around 
fell down in the presence of Johnson Suleiman and broke his head into two. He also held the two heads and joined it back. He was watching process. Today you see him shouting and speaking and you just say, Lord, that dimension, I give myself a span of three months. Wait and see the demons that will lead you there. I'm out of time. I'll round up finally by sharing keys to a successful destiny. I'll give us six keys. Tonight's teaching is very simple and we'll pray. Six keys to a successful destiny. Look at me. Lift your right hand, everybody. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I receive grace to go through the process of greatness. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I'm not in a hurry. I will wait. I will move at your timing and enter my destiny in the name of Jesus. Don't let anybody put pressure on you. They say at your age you are not married. They don't have the same destiny. If the person is not married, tell him go and marry. In the, in, in, the overtaking is allowed. Go. Don't, don't put pressure on me. Or they look at you now and say, see, at age 26, I was a millionaire. Look at you, 33. 33, you are looking at me. Take it easy. You have a ministry. There are only five people. You come and sit down in Koinonia and say, hey, you find out how our first crusades were. First crusade. The first day of our first crusade, those of us who went, I think we were, we were, it was us and then some other few people. One day I told God, I said, see, crowd or no crowd. Crowd started coming in our ministry when we gave up on the issue of crowd and just focused on God. I see a lot of people, especially young pastors around. The, that, that the people come carry all kinds of offering and write all kinds of useless titles on it and come and meet me and see one to tap it. Calm down. Don't you know that at every level, there is a level of responsibility that comes with success. Keys to a successful destiny. Number one, determination. You must be determined to succeed. Do you know what determination is? It's a resolve. It's a resolve. Burn the bridge behind you and say no matter how long it will take, I will get to destiny. Some of you here, God is calling you into different areas. Fashion, media. You know that God has told you that the world will hear your voice. But are you willing to pay the price? Let me tell you the truth. If you know what the price is and you pay the price, nobody will stop you. If, if a little girl, madame's daughter, madame, if your daughter holds, assuming a Mercedes Benz is 7 million, if your daughter holds a check of 7 million and goes to a car factory and gives them, will they say your daughter is too small? She brought the price. Let me tell you something. Every enviable destiny you see, including your own, has a price tag. Stop deceiving yourself. Look very well. You will see the price tag. Be determined to succeed. Be determined. You must lose something to get to your destiny. I won't deceive you. You will lose your reputation. You will lose some sacrifices. You may lose your weight. You may lose a lot of things because you will have to fast and pray. You will lose a lot of things. You'll be wearing two shirts and one trouser. You wash it in the night and wear it in the morning, but you are buying books. No problem. A day will come you will not need to buy things again for the rest of your life because you have created an impact. A time will come in my life I am convinced if I buy clothes is my choice. A time will come in my life if I buy cars. Oyedeko said they give him cars every day. Where were the people when he was driving his beetle to go and hear what God was asking him about? They will come eventually. Be determined. Say in the name of Jesus, I am determined to succeed. Say it in the name of Jesus. No matter what I will go through, I make up my mind. No matter what I have to endure, I will fulfill destiny. Look beyond limitations. Look beyond barriers. Number two. Number two. Go for information. I beg you brothers and sisters, go for information. 
your destiny will not open up automatically it's good to pray it's good to fast go for knowledge get information hallelujah the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman second timothy 2 verse 15 study study he said and i daniel understood by books great men in life are those who read study study the life of great people who are in the area that god is calling you there are two ways to learn in life mentors and mistakes mistakes are the ways that foolish people learn hallelujah mentors open up their wounds for you to see are you listening to me so that you may not have to make that same mistake again let people help your life get their books get tapes the bible says follow them who through faith and patience study their stories pray don't just run after power what do they do that brings the presence of god what do they do that brings the favor of god what opened the heavens for them hallelujah say i go for knowledge the bible says proverbs 4 verse 7 it said get wisdom get understanding go for wisdom go for understanding many of us don't buy books we don't invest many of us don't go online years ago before they even started internet mobile communication we used to go for vigil in um, evolution cafe we go and sit down there and we'll just be night vigil because we could not afford browsing anytime we wanted so we'll go in the night you pay 150 or is it 200 then and then you browse all through the night we are browsing peter tan we are searching what is the holy ghost doing around the earth why are some people poor google search you keep your eyes there you are wrestling with sleep you say sleep i have a journey i'm going you won't stop me when you are feeling sleepy you get up and stroll outside with your shoe and sandals scattered your shirts oversized everything but you say i'm going somewhere many of you don't be ashamed of the process because it will be a while and you live it forever hallelujah we're praying any of you sleep and snow and wake up and get angry you think your destiny will open like that no sir get wisdom get information we invested heavily in books i still read books till today i read books on leadership i read books that help me it's not everything you see done that is just the anointing in that sense we're rounding up number three spend time spend time praying for your life and destiny write it if you don't pray for your destiny and you find out that you get there you got there you were dreaming i assure you you were dreaming just wake up wipe your tears and see what you are in now if you wake up just find out that you are because you have a devil who will not let you enter your destiny but it is through the greatness of thy power that the enemies will submit themselves and he spake a parable to the end that men would ought always to pray and not to faint don't you think the devil will sit down and just watch your destiny unfold? From the day Jesus was announced, Satan started following him. When Jesus was fasting, Satan was patient. Waited for 40 solid days until Jesus finished. He said, oh, thank you. And he came. He said, now that uh, this has happened, he began to negotiate. Your destiny will not change overnight. Spend time praying. Lock yourself. Pray. Carry the notebook. If you don't have a notebook that you are recording things for destiny, I know you are lazy and you are not serious about your destiny. You must have a notebook. How many of you have notebooks? Don't lift your hands because some of you will be lying. Don't lift your hands. How many of you have notebooks that you write that God showed me? I saw it in a vision that one day I'm going to be helping the less privileged. I saw myself on TV. I saw myself. I saw myself beyond my geographical location. I saw myself. 
Yes, I can't speak English well. But the me I saw in the, speak, in the future was speaking polished English. So you don't rejoice over me now. I know I'm making grammatical structure and, and nonsense, but I'm praying. Thank God you don't need to learn tongues. I'm praying it. And I'm rising. Get Tessaros. Get a good dictionary and sit down. God told you you'll be a public speaker. You think the way you are talking like this will invite you? Change your mind and read very well. Get a book on public speaking and read. You want to be a man of God and you are ashamed of people and God has said you stand before crowds. The remedy, pray in tongues. Boldness. Boldness will come upon you. Hallelujah. So get a notebook, everyone. A notebook, write destiny or purpose or whatever. I have notebooks for my finances, for the things that God tells me, for the visions that he has shown me. Some of the books are torn. I've, I've been transferring them through the years. Some of the sermons that we preach here are, are things that the Lord taught me. Sometimes I would dust it and read it and cry and say, your majesty, you taught me these things. I did not understand, but now I understand. If you don't have any book, who, how will you teach people in the future? Because many of you are only thinking about yourself and your wife and your children. Think posterity. Hallelujah. Spend time praying. Say, I receive grace to pray for my destiny. Be disciplined. Be disciplined and focused. Isaiah 50 verse 7. He said, I have set my eyes like a flint. You must be focused in life. Many of you are too distracted. You are doing everything. You are in every group. You are in every association. You are in everything. Where are you going? I'm going. Where? Small time now, you carry one girl or one guy. Add to the, the trouble you are creating. You are going. Where are we going? How many of you have climbed bike? And you told the bike, he called the name of the place. He didn't even hear. He said, yes, I know. And now you are going. Later you tell him, ah, do you know the place? He said, Kai, I, the last time I came here, he doesn't know where he's going. When you don't know where you are going and you carry other people, there's an accident that is going to happen. For sure. Be disciplined. If God has called you to ministry, for instance, you've got to be disciplined. You are like a military man. You cannot entangle yourself with civilian affairs. It's a sacrifice. You can't live an ordinary life. No. You can't accept the call. See, when you accept the call of God upon your life, that's your end to an ordinary life. Sisters, if God has told you you marry a man of God, just know that you are going to live a life of sacrifice forever. Just forget about trying to have it my way. That one is gone. Go and look for a pilot or, or, or someone, a businessman. God has called you. What's your name, sir? Eh? Philip, please stand up, sir. God has called you, for instance. Alright? No, keep standing. And said, Philip, tomorrow you are going to own banks. For instance. And now God has spoken to you. And now Philip is not doing anything. He just says, Prophet, so, so, so. so every time he sees him on TV, he says, that's the guy. He spoke about my destiny. He said it 10 years ago. 10 years later, nothing, no movement in the realm of the spirit because it will not happen automatically. Please sit down. What has God told you? What are you doing about it? When I knew the call of God was upon my life, I started reading books. I have books about ethics of ministry. I have books about church planting, discipline, focus. Now is not the time for visiting everybody. That day will come. But now is not the time. Some of you are always visiting and running around. You go and meet your friends. Tell lies. Tell lies. Tell lies. You are lying and they are listening to you. You are just telling lies. You don't even know when you have tied yourself in. They are just looking at you. You are lying. What you say you didn't do. In the gist later you said you did it. And then they remind you and say, oh sorry. I didn't do this. Those things are unnecessary. Settle down with your destiny. The Bible says in the multitude of many words, many useless words, sin. What is the sin for words? Lying. You say things that didn't happen, create your film there, act it, the people are watching you. Be composed. Listen, I'm telling you. 
package yourself like a leader. You can't just do everything. Hallelujah. Be disciplined. You are saying God is going to bless you and you stand before nations. You are just moving outside. You just buy popcorn. You just cry. Oh, you are pretty. Some even small. You pick it and drop. You won't go far that way. I assure you, you won't go. Pray in tongues. You won't go far that way. You must be disciplined. You go somewhere. You have not even prayed for the people. They said there's food. You say, hey, thank you. Why can't you hold yourself? The Bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. There is a time to eat. There is a time to live. There is a time to collect money for many gullible people. There is a time to live and say, God bless you. Hallelujah. There are ethics. Many of us need to learn it. You have not done anything you want to sit in front. The Bible says when you come into a place, go and sit at the back. Hallelujah. It's God that will bring you to the front. Many of you will come. I'm not saying front, literally. You get what I'm saying? You just come and sit. Then later they say the, the people who they kept the seat for coming, they lead you in front of everybody. You must go and sit at that back and start gradually till you come. If you ever came to the front because someone brought you, that's not your position. It's just favor. You will still go back. Many people have lived around successful people and they think they are successful. If I have a friend, come sir, my brother. If I have a friend, assuming this guy is my PA, every time I go for administration, you will sit in front of me. He can be deceitful. Because the day I'm not around, you will bounce in front. And they'll say, go back, Jerry. You really believe you deserve the front seat? Many of you are leveraging on the success of others. And God is telling you, you need to create a track record for yourself. You don't pray, but their prayer covers for you. You don't fast, their fasting covers. You say, I like this kind of friendship. A day will come, you will stand on your own. That's the day the robber will hit the road. God bless you, sir. The time I was trying to save has gone. Praise God. Finally, embrace a life of competence and excellence. Proverbs 22 verse 29. See thou a man diligent in his business. Mediocrity will only end you average in life. Whether in ministry, whether in business, whether in politics, whether in education, on your job. Be excellent. Be competent. Genesis 41 verse 14, powerful scripture. It says, and Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And Pharaoh sent for Joseph. Why? Because he interpreted the dreams. Do you know what he said? He said, and Pharaoh sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Pharaoh sent for Joseph. Joseph had prepared himself. I've said it, favor is when preparation meets opportunity. And the king, Pharaoh, sent for Joseph. And what happened? They brought Joseph out of his competence that will bring you out of your dungeon. Many of you are in some dungeons you inherited. If you remain there, you will remain there. You will give birth there. Hallelujah. I have a destiny in Christ. And I vowed to my generation that I will pay the debt that I owe this generation. I'm speaking to champions right now. Look at me. We are going to pray. Many of you are sitting. You are hearing the voice of God through what I'm saying. You need to rise up tonight. Don't just feel emotional about it. And tell yourself, I've heard this word. And I'm going to run with it. Outside. Some of you may be outside. Nobody is seeing you. You are just there. I want you to know that destiny is calling. Vow to yourself that I won't fail. That you won't allow anybody go back and find out what am I on earth here for cry unto God if you don't know why you are living you will keep escorting everybody in destiny and you will get old and find out that all you were doing was to be escorting others it's time to discover purpose if you cannot tell me why you are alive in one sentence you do not know it hallelujah I assure you you do not know it the first time I heard Dr. Miles Monroe say this, I said, what kind of arrogant man is this? But eventually I found out it's true. Hallelujah. What is the color of your shirt, Aaron? Black. Simple. Say the color is the one that is not the white. You don't know it. What is the color of your shirt? Black. What is the color of your own? White. Period. What are you here for? 
don't talk Greek and what are you here for? If you don't know it, go and flog it out with destiny. Because there are many people who do not know. For the prophet, he said, while you were in your mother's womb, there are many of you God has called you to wipe the tears of generations. There are many of you God has called you to have NGOs and conglomerates that will help people. There are some of you who are entrepreneurs. Some of you are evangelists. Some of you are going to be in the area of government, some business, some politics. Do you know what you are working for? Or you are just depending on your certificate and then ladies hoping that one man will come and then you ask the man, what, what are you? And the guy say, I'm a preacher. I say to him, I'm a preacher's wife. Is that what you are waiting for? Hallelujah. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. So your first determination tonight is that you will become a tighter. Buy envelopes. Don't look for it when the money comes. Your needs are plenty. Buy envelopes. Your tight is not your last 10%. When you do everything, you just calculate uh, 170, 2005, 85. Then you just check your pocket. Some of you come to give tight. Let me teach you how to give tight. Don't just squeeze money and put it in your pocket. And while they are praying, you are just checking. And 200 naira comes, you push it down. You bring 100 naira. I say, God knows it's 1,000. And then you stand. The Bible says, honor the Lord. It is a gift to the Lord, your tithe. Bring it to honor the Lord. How do you honor someone? When you cook food to honor somebody, you put it in your heart and say, taste and see if it's sweet. You package it. Are you listening to me? Buy envelopes. As soon as money comes into your hands, you may not be able to give tithes of 200, 300, 200, but this is what I do. Some of those little, little amounts, you can't pick out tithes from 10 errors, 1 error. So when a bulk amount comes, I remove and by faith, I remove what I call a representative fraction. I say, Lord, I know that I was within the range of one to 5,000 Naira that came as miscellaneous. I'm adding this 500 Naira by faith and I'm releasing it to cover for it. Are you listening to me? Be faithful in your tithing. We live in a hostile country, people. Don't you think that your lack of adherence to God's word will be good for you. Begin to build, send vapor to the cloud right now. Let your clouds be full. So that when you begin to step out, it will begin to rain. Hallelujah. One last thing I'll talk about for finance and then I'm done. The Bible never said God will send money from heaven. There have been a few miracles like that in the fish and the rest. But they didn't happen many times. Meaning it will happen many times that way in your life. You open your wallet one day and saw 1,000. It will not continue to happen every day. That was a miracle to salvage you, encourage you, and show you God's love. Hallelujah. When you tithe and you give, listen to me. The heavens are open over you. The favor of God comes upon you. Let me tell you something. The favor of God does not bring you financial freedom the favor of God sets you on a pace and brings seed for you brings wisdom for you brings the connection for you it is your application of the principles of God that's why you can give and say ah a breakthrough happened somebody called me and they gave me a job somebody called me and they gave me a 10 million naira that's not all you need in this life that's a seed that is supposed to meet wisdom that is already waiting and it should change your life are you listening to me? The place of diligence in building yourself. There are many of us that all of the laws of finances, we have neglected them. I have, have been shouting this thing for years. You will never get blessed above your mindset. God himself will stop you from getting there. There are many stingy and greedy people. They know nothing about money. There are many ministries. They know nothing about financial planning. They know nothing about leadership and corporate finance and administration. Yet they want God to bless them with one billion. He will not. It doesn't work that way. Let me show you something quickly. Matthew 25. I shared this scripture somewhere. I think I was talking to a few people. Let me show you something very interesting. And then we'll wrap up. I want us to really receive i don't just want us to come and laugh and rejoice it's not fair you are spending your time 
some of us are coming from far and from near matthew 25 are you there it says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto what then the first revelation is they are all virgins are you listening to me so the story is about 10 virgins not five virgins and five other castaways or prostitutes ten virgins it says they took their lamps thy word is a word lamp to my feet and a light to my path that means they had the word of god are you listening to me they had the word of god let's read on and went forth to meet the bridegroom verse 2 five of them were wise so ten of them took lamps but the bible says five were wise and five were foolish although they were virgins although they were believers although they were the bride of the bridegroom the bible says five were wise five were foolish read on and they that were foolish this is what they did that made them foolish they took lamps so they had the word of god are you listening to me but the bible says and they took no oil with it i hope you know the lamp was burning when you read from amplified it tells you extra oil not just oil there was already oil hallelujah that's a type of the inspiration the anointing the grace of the spirit but the wise took extra oil in their vessels not the lamb but the bible says we have this this treasure in where now he said they took extra oil in their vessels follow me i want to show you a powerful revelation so that's what made some wise they only catered for now and every time there are many of you in church the moment they begin to be this the bible says the foolish ones were myopic they took their lamp they did not know that it requires more oil because it's burning the bible says the wise ones took extra there are things god is giving you now that are extra they don't look spiritual but these are the extra oil when you tithe when you give god opens you those extra ideas those extra information you just step into a bookstore and you see a book management and god is saying buy it he said but god i'm a faithful usher god is saying get it extra oil the foolish people say no i'm just looking for anointing if it's anointing and five ways to study your bible god is saying get those extra oil listen this is very important the bible says some got extra oil some did not and all of them went in watch what happened all of them slept because they were waiting for the bridegroom and he didn't come the bible says at a particular point there was a shout and they said rise up the bridegroom is here what happened because it had been burning those who had extra oil in their vessels did what they found out that there was an emergency situation and so they had to take advantage of the extra oil are you listening to me and now they began to pour it and the alarm came back and those who were foolish what happened to them the bible says they had no oil they had lamp the lamp was burning but it was about to die and it was it was obvious that it was not enough to sustain them till the arrival of the bridegroom guess what happened in any case you will still buy that extra vessel the trouble is when they began to say help us the people say no we cannot help you we got enough for ourselves they say go to the buyers that means the buyers were always there but the people neglected it when the buyers were marketing and saying come and buy extra oil say no 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 are you not seeing how bright my lamp is they say it may not make sense now we don't know how long the bridegroom will stay they say no no he will come now are you getting blessed when the lord showed me this it opened me up everything god leads me to i don't play again if god says learn something about sweeping go ahead you're a man of god but learn it extra oil are you listening to me the bible says to a point that there will be no room to contain it because a day will come when the lamp of many will be growing dim paul had his knowledge of the jewish culture a time came it was not his anointing that saved him 
are you listening to me the romans were going to beat him and he said hold on let me tell you people something he, in the midst of the heat and the suffering hallelujah he began to prophesy in the midst of all of these things he began to speak what did he say he said i am a jew he said let me tell you i was trained under gamaliel a pharisee to the core ah they suddenly that was his extra oil a time came when he escaped in the and they went to an island called melita after the angel appeared to him and he said there shall be no loss there was no church and nobody to support him because they were actually taking him to kill him the bible says he went to, to his tent making and suddenly his tent making sustained him and he bought a house with it these were some of the extra oils are you listening to me get your extra oil get your extra oil because the revival that is going to happen let me tell you something the bible says see thou a man diligent in his business he shall not stand before me men he shall stand before kings he said the gift of a man when you begin to tithe god grants you opportunities for your gifts to rise up can i say something very honestly many men of god even those who are rich don't know why they are rich that's why they are not teaching their congregation correctly the men do not understand of course ministry is not business are you getting me but watch this if assuming aaron come please assuming aaron is a ceo of a company and he's sick and dying are you listening to me okay thank you very much hallelujah and then i lay hands on him and he gets healed are you listening to me and then he decides to say man of god the money i would have gone to the hospital with the hundred million i sow into your life watch this is it not the gift of god that work in a man who has disciplined himself to find it and he has he has brought it to meet a need is that correct are you listening to me and because the bible says he shall not stand before me men he receives the reward many of the men of god think it's because they are preachers that they are getting blessed the answer is no they have paid the price and they have built something are you listening to me i am blessing you is that correct i am doing something to your mind god is going to use us to heal you and so when you come to honor us is the same thing that happens when somebody packages a product and goes to give someone and he is blessed for it are you listening to me because the way men of god teach they teach it in such a way that everybody wants to be a man of god because they have made it look like if you're a man of god you cannot get blessed what of the person who is not called into a fivefold ministry how did god package his finances are you listening to me the gift of a man don't let anybody deceive you the gift of a man god will use your witty inventions god will use your giftings god will use your ideas and he will grant you grace and the anointing of the spirit is upon it and he will open you up to an endless realm of blessing say amen god bless you sir after you have done all of this then you can now begin to pray and speak the word and say lord i speak increase to my finances and then follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you brothers and sisters there is no other way i know in the bible that you will arrive to lasting blessings even for your family no matter how hard working you are if you are not a tighter you are in trouble no matter how much you are tighter you are if you are not diligent to open yourself to other areas of christ and other areas of the wisdom of his word you will not receive anything the bible says get wisdom get understanding he said exalt her and she shall promote you she shall put an end an ornament of glory a crown of glory upon your head where thou dost embrace her he said i riches dwell with prudence then i have knowledge of witty inventions he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches say it's god's desire to bless me and it's god's desire to bless my family say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a tither i kill greed in my life i am a faithful tither a consistent tither i am a giver say it i am a giver i invest in the house of god and then god will bless you the second thing the lord spoke to me about 
is fear fear one of the root causes listen to me one of the root causes of sicknesses and infirmity is fear listen statistics has it to say that over 80 percent of the things we fear do not actually happen 80 percent of the things we fear don't happen hallelujah hebrews chapter 2 verse 15 the bible says and to deliver them who to fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage what does fear do it keeps you in bondage fear fear of the unknown there are many people you are working in a hospital every day you are busy crying and say hey will i catch hiv i'm giving hiv patients this and the day you touch an hiv patient and the needle touches you say hey, it has happened fear 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 you go to see the doctor for a medical checkup and the doctor is reading a book you think he's nodding over your situation and you start lamenting say hey it has happened and that seed is sown into you do you realize there are many people who were sick and did not know that were sick they were very healthy until the day the doctor told them this is wrong with you suddenly they started emanciating if the doctor had not told them i tell you they would have been bubbling and laughing the day they had that report that was the day that ministration of death happened fear fear of death you want to travel fear you want to start a business or a company or a corporation fear you want to start a ministry fear the bible says for god has not given us the spirit of what fear second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for god say for god has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind fear is a demonic spirit many of you as you are coming for the miracle service satan will be speaking to you and say are you sure are you sure you'll be healed this is your situation have you not gone you traveled abroad you went for healing you did whatever you were around in miracle service january february march april you were not healed what is the guarantee that you'll be healed now prophecies came words of knowledge came but you were not healed fear 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 keeps people in bondage you must conquer fear are you listening to me say i refuse to fear there are many people here god has been speaking to you build your house build your house you just laugh you check your account and you see there is ten thousand there god said build your house You don't even have the courage to check and see if there is land available many of our fathers are like that they are reaching many people when they begin to reach retirement age what happens fear they become aggressive different kinds of do you know that many diseases high blood pressure stroke they are psychological sicknesses hallelujah many of them are psychological sicknesses lack of money lack of help lack of trouble lack of this a man is giving out his daughter is afraid will she die hell what will happen in this nigeria you want to travel abroad people are laughing with you you are crying will i die fear say i refuse to fear say it one more time i refuse to fear people are not getting married the moment you check you are 23 years old you are going for every counseling you know they say how old are you, you say 23 and the woman say ah so what's the hurry for you say forget oh i'm not playing that's how the ones who went before me waited now they are 37. fear and satan begins to minister fear to you i hope the word of god is setting you free because that's a miracle some of you need right now you write an exam and you did well you cross check it and you got everything but you are more afraid than the people who didn't even do the exam you are going around meeting the lecturer please just solve the questions let me just be sure ah hey, the way this thing is doing my my heart 
many diseases that we have today are as a result of fear are you listening to me no matter how hands are laid on you if you do not conquer that fear it will come back have you seen people come again and again to join healing lines they are healed they go back then they come back again i refuse to fear i refuse to fear hallelujah i refuse to fear let the courage joshua when moses gave him the button he looked at two point something million people angry people and joshua was afraid and god said be strong come on be strong you're a young man but be strong and courageous as i was with moses so i will be with you say the lord is with me i refuse to be afraid your father calls you and says Tor, you're of age now 200 level is not a joke i didn't get to 200 level you start paying your school fees from now and you receive that news and fear comes you suddenly begin to check which of my uncles which of my aunties every time an angel appears to bring us messages from god what do they start fear not they know the people they are dealing with so they say fear not relax fear not tell yourself fear not hallelujah someone met me one time and said ah the way you walk and you do the things that you do ah don't you think you need rest you know this is how it starts one day high blood pressure comes i said the day you hear that i have high blood pressure i say it with all authority and by the sure message of god you know that's a lie there is no reason there is no reason hallelujah the worst that can happen is that i will die when i die people mourn and say ah joshua selman <laughs> and then that's all after two weeks you continue no matter how you love me you will cry and continue life no matter how i love you i will go and leave you and look at and join the cloud of witnesses and say air on fire hallelujah fear of death is the greatest kind of fear when you conquer that one you are alive until that until you conquer the fear of death you are still existing hallelujah i was coming back from lagos this morning and see i'm telling you it will take a long time for nigerians to recover from what happened the plane crash i i mean i saw somebody videotaping uh, as in from his phone his blackberry he sat in front of me and he was just snapping everything i said what is going on in this guy's mind now he's saying in case in case oh our hearts go for the families that are that were we prayed for them here and we encouraged them but i want you to be full of faith your fear does not help anything it hurts everything fear has never helped any man 10 spies 12 spies came back and 10 said ah he said moses you're a wicked man thank god we came back alive are you joking we ate of the fruit but we're not going there again joshua and caleb said we are well able let us go up at once at once many of you are afraid to confront your life hallelujah to confront Go and apply for a job. You say, me, I read psychology. Eh? And the Holy Spirit is saying, go and drop your offer in the bank. You are saying, psychology, third class. I can't mock myself. I've laughed at myself alone in the room. Fear. Fear. Hallelujah. It's time for you to get married. God is telling you, that's your wife. Fear. And every time you just pass and say, Ay! God. And you do as if you are going to the bathroom. And he said, Lord, how do I compose myself? Bible says, when you stand before them, you shall not think of what to say. For in that very hour, it will not be you speaking. And all the brothers say, He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say. It's called Anakazo. The compelling power of the Spirit. So you better start listening to what your father and mother is telling you hallelujah 
the last thing joy nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 i know many of us don't know where this scripture is we always quote it nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 the reason why many believers are weak is because we lack joy nehemiah chapter 8 it says are you there okay nehemiah chapter 8 listen hallelujah listen he says and he said go your way eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared he said for this day is holy unto our god neither be ye sorry afraid intimidated he said for the joy of the lord is your strength do you know there are many weak people they are weak because they don't know what is wrong with them it's lack of joy he said a merry heart do it good like medicine not a merry mouth joy is not just laughing a merriment of your heart a merry heart do it good like medicine but a broken spirit who can bear lack of joy there are many diseases right now that i'm telling you as i'm speaking you'll be living suddenly you find out that your blood pressure is coming back to normal no prayer the joy of the lord becomes strength for you in the spirit the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation the word salvation there in the greek is the word soteria healing prosperity breakthrough with joy with joy hallelujah the system designs people to be angry hallelujah just go on the street and see everybody drivers are angry conductors are angry those entering the car are angry government officials are angry you want to listen to the news the moment the song you know the, the song is playing you're already frowning let's see what they will tell us is eating your spirit and the next thing you wake up with pains all over your body they go to the hospital they cannot find what it is i tell you it's lack of joy 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 even medical science tells us that happy and joyful people live long hallelujah there are some of you because of anger your face has assumed that shape even when you are happy people have to find out whether you are you are really so or not makes you hostile to your wife hostile to your husband hostile to your children lack of joy there are many of you as soon as you are going to meet your parents they are angry not because they are not happy to see you fear lack of joy they know school fees will come and other things and unnecessary anger why is there too much salt in this food and you know there's no salt. there's no too much salt lack of joy are you getting blessed tonight there are many of you you are angry with your roommates one month ago they used your pot they didn't wash it lack of joy is spirit you go to prayer and you cannot pray after 10 minutes you didn't even know when you stopped and you are thinking i just said bah, 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 bah. you are angry a broken spirit the bible calls it hallelujah yes we have people who are angry sad angry at the government angry at your lecturer the moment your lecturer steps in you are eyeing the person all through you don't even know the lecture has started angry at exams you see timetable you just stand why see cultivate an attitude of joy are you listening to me you're cooking your roommates don't know whether they are the ones hurting you or you are just angry you are hissing 20 times the people who are laughing with you they don't know whether they are the ones who have offended you or not hallelujah lack of joy the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord the joy of the lord 
the joy of the Lord it is my strength hallelujah the joy of the Lord as we begin to minister to you be happy be excited let me tell you something Satan can never dwell in the realm where there is joy and praises that's why the Bible says God himself inhabits the praises of his people once your life is full of joy you are happy you are excited not necessarily you are no it you know you are hungry but you are excited you are even comforting somebody who just finished a plate of amala and the person is sad and you are comforting the person and the person says have you eaten you say no let's say you mean it someone is shouting and angry and say ah my father didn't send me money and you see someone who tells you you are lucky i don't even have a father and a mother but i call him faithful It's only 30 30 000 naira they are sending to me and somebody says the last the only thing they gave him from the village was half of his transport and faith took him and now he's in final year what is killing your joy i know it looks very simple the first time i had this was i had joan hunter the daughter of charles and francis hunter talking about it and one day the lord opened my eyes and i began to see that many sicknesses are as a result of lack of joy it eats you up you see someone getting lean it's not hiv it's not liver problem a young man of 21 thinking as if he's 50 years you are not married you don't have a wife you are just thinking hallelujah from the day you won't jump you are thinking you are just thinking once you see any letter U and M, it threatens you. Ah, you hear me? Jam. Can you learn to be confident in life and allow the joy of the Spirit come upon you? The Lord asked me to preach these things. Disobedience, fear, and lack of joy. A merry heart doeth good. Why did he link a merry heart to medicine? It has a therapeutic effect where you smile and you are happy you see your roommates and you get up and say bless you bless you your roommate is frowning say there's no problem i know i'm sorry say god over my dead body for me to say i'm sorry i've been keeping quiet i'm not a fool i will let you know that i'm not stupid but he's killing you can't you see when you hold someone down part of you must be down to keep holding the person so you'll never move forward yourself when you release people and let them go lack of joy brings offense everything annoys you food that you know is nice why is there bone in this fish as if this is the first time you are eating it you get angry at your boss in office you get angry at everybody when you come to church you just look and say why is Ike smiling as he's playing that keyboard can't he keep quiet why must the protocol stand here you see let me tell you when there is no joy you become edgy you are offended everything gets you angry why did my room and my my seat may put perfume he is reacting one kind oh god your problem is lack of joy that's why people laugh under the anointing a renaissance of joy god brings joy even God sits in the heavens and laughs so as we arise and begin to trust God to do a quick walk in this place tonight I want you to know that once there is joy in you and there is no fear many of you may not really need any miracle for your body again you will suddenly stand up and find out that that pain is not there because that's the strength that Satan had you call it fever you call it recurrent fever but now you are seeing that the real thing is lack of joy worry the bible dedicated one whole chapter to address the issue of worry he said who among you by worrying will add a cubit to his hand he said look consider the lilies of the field they do not sow nor reap they are breaking a law yet your heavenly father provides for them he says not even solomon adorned in all his regalia is as one of these 
is God not faithful? Is he not that you are alive today is proof that there is hope for your life? I, I have HIV. They've told me I'll live for two years. Whose report will you believe? Let the joy of the spirit radiate through you. Rise up on your feet. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. God will do amazing things in this place shortly. Bless the Lord. Praise to be obedient. Make sure you are praying. Grace to be obedient. Grace to be obedient. Pray against fear. I conquer fear. The fear of death. Fear of failure. Fear of sickness. Fear of my needs being met. God is able. What God does not give you, you cannot get. Where God does not take you, you cannot go. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of the past. Lift your voice and say, I, can, I conquer fear. Fear that brings depression. Fear that empowers Satan to keep sickness in your body. Command fear to go. I stop being afraid of who will sponsor me. Whether the business idea will thrive, whether the ministry will thrive, whether I will get married, whether I will build a house, whether I will graduate, conquer that fear, whether my project will be received. Whether I'll be promoted in my office, pray I conquer that fear in the name of the Lord Jesus. Will the sickness leave me? Yes, it will. Now go ahead and prophesy. Say, Joy, I've got joy, it's like a river. Let the joy of the spirit become strength to my bones. Make it take a part of the That my grain goes. Offense, unforgiveness, all the things that lack of joy brings. Prophesy. Say my spirit will not be broken. The Bible says a broken spirit. A broken spirit. Who can bear? Lack of joy can kill. Lack of joy will depress you. I choose to be full of joy. Joy. The oil of gladness. The garment of praise. Hallelujah. Now, as we begin to minister, we're going to be very fast because of time. Hallelujah. God is going to be bringing instant miracles, instant miracles to people. Hallelujah. When that happens, please, it's good to testify. Once, even if the miracle has not been complete, once that started, locate the ushers very quickly. Let's see if we can have a few testimonies. We'll be really fast may not be able to go into so much of details hallelujah where is the family that came from Bauchi? let's start from there this is not word of knowledge i was told where is the family that came from Bauchi? are you here come out quickly inside and outside all right come quick 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come, sir. Okay. 
Hallelujah. You came all the way from Bauchi. I want you to know that you will not go back the same. Are you listening to me? But the devil is oppressing you. I'm seeing a whirlwind around you. This is what I'm seeing. You have been so oppressed. Hallelujah. You believe that? Hallelujah. And God will set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. You came all the way because you have faith. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the evil one. Hallelujah. Pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou devil. Take your hands off his body. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. I command that devil of the name of Jesus. She Be delivered right now. I set you free. See, I see that the plan is even to take his life. Before the end of this year, this is the plan to kill this guy. You see that? That they'll go and lock you up in a place where they lock mad men. And from there you will just sleep and you will not wake up. It happened last year. You see that? It happened last year. They went and locked him. Psychiatrist at this same time. The plan is that this, at the beginning of next month, you are supposed to go to a psychiatrist. And that's where you go and die. Praise the Lord. Last year, same time, this month, I was being locked due to some, at least some demonic attacks, which influenced me in order to attack my parents with weapons, and I was arrested by the police. Iron, metal, knife. I this was, is it. I'm seeing it right before me. I was arrested by the policeman. Later on, they now found out that I was mentally as affected. They took me to the psychiatry. But to God be the glory. The psychiatrist uh, overall there says I'm not mad, but it seems I'm possessed. No, you, you'll be free right now. Oh no, come on. You came for Koinonia. You will know you met God tonight. Are you listening? God reveals to redeem. If God has, has, has revealed your situation, you'll be free from it. Hmm? The scourging tongues of men, the influences of friends, look at them right before you. Hmm? Listen, look at me. Love is a command, relationship is not. Wave your friends goodbye where you go to bow. Are you listening to me? Many of your friends are not good people. Are you listening to me? Tell them goodbye and come to church and find healthy friends who love God and are serious. But I want to pray for you right now. Are you listening to me? Say in the name of Jesus. Yes. I am free. In the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. All right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release the power of God upon you right now. No, 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 not you. I'm praying for you now. I command that devil influencing you over your mind. Now be free. Be gone by the power of the Holy Spirit. Psychosomatism go demonic influence go from today you begin to behave normally now right now right here in the name of jesus christ see something is happening to you i'm seeing like something is leaving you that's what i'm seeing I'm, something is coming out from inside you that's what god is showing you in the name of jesus i command that demonic thing to leave you right now hallelujah there's a wild spirit that entered this guy i command that devil Come out of him right now. Come out of him right now. Come out of him right now. In the name of Jesus. Look. See what is happening. You see the way he's breathing. This is the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce you free. Liberty for you. Liberty from today. No more returning to the psychiatry. By faith, I call you perfectly whole. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. You are free. You are free, sir. God is bringing restoration to your family. Are you listening to me? 
financial restoration. God is blessing your family. Who is Suleiman? Do you know anybody called Suleiman? I'm seeing a name Suleiman. No, no, I'm saying it may not be related to your family. I'm just saying who is Suleiman? You know anyone called Suleiman? Who is he? Mohammed Suleiman is your brother. Yes. Go and tell him that the Lord is going to bring him into a great season of favor. Suleiman, the Lord says I should tell you. Go and tell Suleiman. Are you listening to me? What does he do? He's he just finished his HND at Federal Polytechnic Public State. But God is saying, I should tell you, go and tell him. I didn't know that he has just finished. Up to now, he's disturbing me to bring my credentials. He's disturbing me every That's day to saying. bring. Go and tell him that the Lord says that he's entering a new season of financial favor. I pray for all of you as a family right now. Stretch your hands, saints of God, in one minute. Let's pray for them. You came all the way from Bauchi. Return with testimonies. Perfection upon this gentleman and then upon you all of you you will carry an anointing and go back with it in the name of jesus i pray that the fire of the spirit will burn in you the fire of the spirit will burn in you the fire of the spirit for god will use you mightily my brother you will be used as a mighty tool in the hands of god you will be a great teacher of the world and you will move in signs and wonders that's what the spirit of god is saying God bless you. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The couple that came from Abuja or Kaduna, you called me, you spoke with me about it. Um, Hakim. Is he here? Come. listening to me it will end right now the power of god i'm going to minister to you i already sense the power of god for you oh yes you will be healed lift your hands the power of god comes upon you strong thou devil in the name of the lord jesus come out of her now come out of her now come out of her now in the name of jesus christ let the fire of God burn every chaff inside you right now. The fire of God comes upon you strong. Every chaff be burned now. 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 In the name of Jesus. That devil of infirmity leaves you. It leaves you. It leaves you. It leaves you. It leaves you. Boy, the power of God is upon this lady. Come, sir. What do you do? You work with? With the NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy. Nigerian Defense Academy. Are you due for promotion? Not yet. You are not yet due for promotion. God will do something in your life that will shock your colleagues. Are you listening to me? Because I saw I saw something like, like uh, soldier cap. That's why I'm asking you whether... You, but you are not a military man. So what are you doing in NDA? You are an accountant there. God is going to promote you and he will increase you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a file. What is this file that I'm seeing? Uh, is there a problem in your office? There is a problem in your office. You are afraid to tell me. See, there is no shame here. This is the family of God. There is a problem in your office. There is a problem in your office. Money that was released for something. And I know there is a problem in your office. 
God is revealing it to help you. You work in the accounts department. You know the way soldiers are, they'll just send all of you away. But God wants to promote you. Soldiers don't take nonsense. But let me pray for you right now. The Lord says for me to release upon you an oil of gladness above your fears. Hallelujah. You believe that? In the name of the Lord Jesus, an oil of gladness comes upon you strong. Receive it right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. An oil of gladness. You go back with a mantle of glory. Please, two of you come. You and her hold your hands together. For what God has joined, let no man put asunder. In the name of Jesus, I declare no death. You will have children by the power of God. No one will resist you. Not sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Appreciate them, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I don't know how we'll do it, but we'll be really fast. Praise God. We'll be really, really, really fast. If you came here with any heart problem, please come out quickly. Run out quickly. Heart problem, hole in your heart. Um, any heart problem, please, let's save time. Heart problem, come out quickly. Heart problem. Those with heart problem, hole in your heart. And breathing problem as a result of... Quick, 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 please come out. We have to be really fast. All of you lift your hands. Those who are sick, the power of God will begin to come upon you like heat. The moment that happens, as soon as I pray for these people, I want those people to come out quickly. Heart problems. It will go, look at me, my dear. What's wrong with you? It's going to leave you now. Out of her! In the name of Jesus, perfection for you and wholeness. Go back to your seat. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. You, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Go and check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Locate the ushers the moment you get healing. God bless you. There's no time to uh, waste in the name of Jesus. What's wrong with you? Pneumonia. Pneumonia. It's not just pneumonia. You have bronchitis too. You have bronchitis. The Lord heals you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Perfection for you in the name of Jesus. Perfection. What's wrong with you? Pneumonia and swollen heart. A swollen heart. Yes. It's unusually enlarged. Yes. On one side of the heart. Yes. The Lord heals you now. Yes, I see it. In the name of Jesus, I command perfection. Be healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands as I begin to release the healing power of God inside and outside. You're going to feel this is the sign God gives me. Hallelujah. Heat. Heat will come on your hand. Many of you as you, you will be healed right there. Some of you will come out. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the healing power right now according to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. All over this building, let the heat, the fire of God is coming already upon you. The moment you sense that you're sick and you sense the heat is heat. That's what God tells me. Heat real heat on your hands i'd like you to leave your seat and come quickly quickly don't think about it leave your seat and come quickly it's happening to men inside and outside or just help them and let them come the moment that heat happens to you the lord is showing me please hurry up we're not we don't have time to waste hallelujah the heat coming upon your hands Run out quickly, it's happening to people. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Don't walk, run inside and outside, inside and outside, inside and outside. It's happening to people. That's the instruction God gives me. Heat, strong heat on your hands. It doesn't matter what is wrong with you. Bring them quickly. That heat, lift your hands, everybody. Oh, let, let the heat come outside. Let it come upon you. 
Let us flow as the Spirit rushes. That heat is the healing anointing. Satan, you are a liar. Heat quickly as that heat happens. As that heat happens to your hands, please hurry up. At the back, 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 stomach area leaves you in the name of Jesus all of you in front I declare upon you these servants of God can we just come and lay hands on the people as they make contact and seal the healing power of God upon you immediately you are healed go back and you check yourself in the name of Jesus perfection for you perfection for you perfection as they pray for you as they pray for you, as they pray for you, receive it now. As they pray for you, and you, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, be healed. Let the power of God touch you right there. Perfection for you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Those under the oppression of Satan. The power of God will come upon some of you now. Us as many of those people, inside and outside, lift your hands. Right now, I release the power of the Holy Spirit. The influence of Satan over your life. Let it go. Now, 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 now. Bring them out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demonic 
We're all going to shout the name Jesus once. Please, ushers, bring all of those people under the influence of the Spirit. That devil is a liar. You came for a miracle service tonight. At the count of three, shout it as loud as you can. The power of God is all upon many of you outside. I'm singing. One, two, three. of three, you and all your demons and devils will leave God's people now. All of you in front, there is fire upon my hands and the Lord says to me to release it. And at the count of three, I release it. That devil cannot remain. One, two, three. I release that fire across every one of you. Satan, I command you, out of these ones and speak liberty liberty one person outside at the rear end outside the power of God comes upon you the power of God comes upon you you are supposed to be here hallelujah Zainab. Who is Zainab? Zainab. I'm hearing the name Zainab. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Ministers, let's see how we can squeeze. Even if it's five, five minutes, we'll do it very quickly. So they just come, release words. We're out of time. We need to pray. We need to pray for the request. Please come. Okay, so Jamfa, you come. Please. You can be able to take some time. 
while I was praying, the Lord showed me a vision. I saw heaps of envelopes. And God says there's going to be a supernatural release of jobs tonight. If you believe it, just connect with it. Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we prophesy under this atmosphere, let there be supernatural, supernatural release of jobs for your people. Supernatural release of jobs for your people. Supernatural release for jobs for your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord gives me the name Chopa. I hear the name Chopa. You have sickness in your body. If the Chopa that I'm talking about is here, just run quickly. Chopa, the Lord gives me the name Chopa. Chopa, if you are Chopa here, quickly, quickly, please. Just come here. Hurry up, please. If you are the one Don't waste that. Quickly. Hurry up, please. The Lord wants to heal Chopa. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Just lift up your hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch her body now. Touch her. Touch her, touch her, touch her and bring healing to her. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release healing, healing right now. Go! In the name of Jesus, around your stomach region, I command supernatural healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Go, you're free. The Lord gives me another name again, Halima. I see Halima has this Halima that the Lord is talking about. You have sickness in your body, Halima, and you've been looking for a job. You've been seeking for a job for a while. If the Lord is talking about maybe your sister or you are here, just run out quickly. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tony, Tony, I just want you to lift up your hands. I hear the Lord speaking to me about about your father god says there's a work of healing that he wants to do in his body you are aware that he has a challenge in his body something connected to the blood region god says he wants to do that work of healing in his body and i hear god says within now in the next one year there shall be supernatural open doors for him i see connection in high places god says that connection shall even come somewhere around abuja that's where i'm seeing outside of this school and I declare that release in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mommy, just lift up your hands. God says he wants to touch you. God says you have been afraid and you have been carrying fear in your heart. There's a pain that you have carried in your heart for many years. Something even connected to your husband. God wants to heal that pain. A loss connected to your husband. Mommy, where is he? Where is your husband? Look at me, mommy. He's late. Your husband is late. That's what I'm talking about. The pain of your husband's death that you have carried in your heart for many years. God says he's going to heal that right now. And God says he's also going to touch your body. I see pain around your joints that God is going to heal. Around your knee region and your waist. I like you to just put your hand on your waist right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we command healing, 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 healing in the name of Jesus. And God says death shall not come near your home. I see a business you are doing right now that God is beginning to prosper. God will command that prosperity. Let that door be opened supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord brings total healings to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. My sister, God says, is breaking the hold of disappointment around your life. Disappointment even connected to men. Over to hearts disappointment from one man to another several men have disappointed you i'm sorry but like you said this is the family of god just put your hands on your head lord in the name of jesus i break that curse i break that curse i break it now 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 in the name of jesus thank you lord 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 Mommy, God says he's bringing restoration. So the injustice that you have experienced around you, God says he's breaking that hold in the name of Jesus. I will see some things connected to your late husband. And God says they shall call you. They shall call you and they shall seek to help you. I release that favor in the name of Jesus. 
God says for the people that He has sent to help you that will fly away from you, they are beginning to come to you right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. The Lord gives me the name happiness. Happiness, happiness, happiness. If you are here, just quickly. Happiness, happiness. There's something the Lord is showing me about your family. Happiness. Happiness. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you because you are breaking that yoke over her family right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I see a lady who walked into this place. You came in with, your, with, with, with a liver disease. You came in with a liver disease. Just lift up your hands. You came in here with a liver disease. Just lift up your hands quickly. They told me that you have liver inflammation. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands. Let me command healing into your body. Lord, we command healing to those ones. With that liver disease, we command healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. God says he's breaking stagnation from your family. The financial situation that your father has had to struggle with, God says he's breaking that hold right now. I hear God says harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. And God says I take away sickness from him right now. Am I saying the truth? God wants to heal your father right now. God says stroke shall not have a place in his body in the name of the Lord Jesus and that symptoms that he has suffered for a while right now I command supernatural healing supernatural healing in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you father among the three young men that came from Bauchi I, I, I see somebody sick in one of your families. I'm seeing somebody lying on the bed, very sick, very ill, as though the person is bedridden. Where is that person? Among the three guys who came here. I like him present. Take me for that person to run out quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing somebody sick, lying as though bedridden. Who is that person? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing, 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 healing to that lady right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we command total healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying somebody they stole your father's car just recently. Just recently. Just lift up your hands. They stole your father's car. God says there's going to be a supernatural restoration. Where is that person? They stole your father's car recently. God says there's going to be supernatural restoration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you command that restoration right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord stood before me with a handkerchief and the Lord says I should prophesy that he's going to wipe the tears of people's academics that's what the Lord showed me listen I saw it and that's why I was holding the handkerchief I was just holding my handkerchief and playing around it hallelujah I was just holding it and waiting for him I thought he was going to prophesy that's why I just kept quiet how many of you believe this in the name that is above every other name whether master student, whether PhD students, diploma students, according to that which was shown me in the spirit, I declare right now that every one of you who names the name of Christ and has cried, I command your crying to be over in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I see a meeting that is being done in the faculty of social sciences 
and I pray right now. I see a meeting in the faculty of social sciences and it's going to affect the final year students. We prophesy that it will fail for you if you are in social sciences. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcers. Lift your hands. Anyone with peptic ulcer. I command while this is going, ushers quickly collect the prayer requests inside and outside. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands. Lift it very high. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God touch you right now. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Peptic ulcer. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. I command blindness, blindness, deafness of any sort, deaf ears be open in the name of Jesus, blind eyes be open in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition in this place, please while you are listening be passing your prayer request quickly to the ushers, bone conditions right now in the name of Jesus. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every bone condition be straightened be healed in the name of Jesus cancers tumors lumps anywhere ovarian cyst I command it to go in the name of Jesus I command it to go in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. All those who came from places other than Zaria, run out here quickly, inside and outside. If you came from a place other than Zaria, come out quickly, for you won't go back the same. Please hurry up. Other than Zaria. Sheba Kaprunda Kritikele Marasta inside and outside any place other than Zaria but you will know that you met him the king of kings this is not all someone is still sitting the Lord is showing me this side come out quickly please we don't want you to go back the same There's someone with a pain on your wrist. Check yourself, you've been healed now. A pain around your wrist. The Lord shows me healing around the wrist. Hallelujah. Among those of you standing, how many of you came to be healed? How many of you came for a healing, a healing related issue? Hallelujah, you and you. Who else? Hallelujah. Okay, I've, I've ministered to you. I want to make sure I minister to all of you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you send them back with an anointing in the name of Jesus that every door that has been closed over your life that the Lord opens it in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you in ministry, I release a supernatural anointing that it will come upon you and engulf you that you will carry the fire of the spirit back to your ministries back to your places two of you God will use you very greatly in the name of Jesus for you will carry the fire of the spirit for you will carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost you will carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost Go with that anointing. Do signs, wonders. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go with this anointing. I prophesy that whatever challenge it is that you came here, that the Lord solves it for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
some of you are representing your families I command that you will go back with a miracle for your families by the creative power of God's word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ God bless you thank you for coming please run back let's have all the prayer requests here sorry we're rushing things we have to hurry up hallelujah hallelujah now lift your hands all of you we always do this during the meetings that there be impartations of signs wonders and miracles we're not a powerless people hallelujah we only we don't just believe in healings and miracles but we believe that you'll be carriers of this anointing hallelujah and lord i pray i'm going to pray for everybody right now that the power of god will come upon you and the fire of god will engulf you let there be baptisms of the spirit let there be impartations miracles signs wonders anointings that will be received hallelujah i'm about to begin praying so inside and outside lift your hands and connect with the spirit when i begin to shout release that's what god tells me just one word release the lord tells me there will be mass impartations and baptisms ushers as much as possible if you can let's have those people the power of god is already moving in the name of the lord jesus release i command a release right now everywhere in this building from the choir down this stand outside i command a release lift your hands and receive it let the power and the fire of god fall right now from the ministers down let impartations begin Rakapata Presekepalasa Oshas locates those people. There is a strong impartation that God desires to happen. Bring them out. They go all over the building. All over. Inside and outside. All over. Move. Partake Please ushers locate them. Miracle waters. Moving in signs. Everyone is receiving. Don't just wait till you're under the anointing. Lift your hands and receive. It's like fire. And it's like rain. Outside. Fire. And rain. At the same time, at the same time, they can take the day, 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 they can
Let it fall like the dew of heaven. Pasheta pakaya. Sembrekete bekete bai. Everyone is receiving something. Don't just stand looking at those here. It's happening to everyone. For your ministries, an impartation. For your businesses, an impartation. Call Pastor Steve. Come. Bring Pastor Steve. Bring him. Come practice a portion. For you will carry a new anointing. A new anointing. A new anointing. You will carry a new anointing. In the name that is above all names. is still moving at the same time many things are happening at the same time at the same time I don't know what it is but I see an angel standing in this row this row this row the power of God will begin to move in this row this center row this center row there is an angel standing is the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, this very row, this row I stand before you, the angel of the Lord, for reasons I do not know, but he walks in the midst of you, he walks in the midst of you. the Lord tells me to prophesy on this road. Lift your hands, those of you here. For he will move in the midst of you. For he will move in the midst of you. For he will move by his angel. Let there be a convocation of the angelic right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a convocation of the angelic stirring anointings.
fight them to flee. Steady anointing. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. The angel walks towards this place. I'm standing where the angel is standing. I'm standing and he says I should wave my hands. This is what the angel of the Lord says for me to do. I wave my hands. Choir. I wave my hands. I wave my hands. I wave my hands. In the glory. Fanny to flame, Fanny to flame, Fanny to flame, Fanny to fire, 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 Pastor William's wife, please, my come. At the same time, miracles are happening. Check yourselves. Bring them out. Set Pastor William's wife, there is a great anointing. No, don't bring her here. There is a great anointing. It will shake you to your foundation. Stepping into a new level. But those of, you, of the prophetic, it will burn you like fire. Fire. lady you come yes he will answer you yes he will answer you yes he will answer you for you step into a new oil new grace upon her like the fire and you by the power of the holy ghost last five rows at the back the last five rows from my left to my right the last five rows at the back lift your hand the last five rows oh, oh, oh. receive a fresh impartation the last five rows the fire of God comes upon you Comes upon you, bringing healing. Comes upon you, comes upon you. You will know you met him tonight. the prayer request. Bring all the prayer requests. 
and unusual healing grace. Miracles are happening. I tell you, unusual miracles, even to families. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord asked me to go around this road. Just you people here. I want to do what the Holy Ghost is asking me to do. It's a fire that I'm engulfing. Shabbatos. Rekotos okoi. Mampre tos kepa. Rakatos seke. Rente kos kepa. Shepakos. Mampre takabaria. Deka prosa. Inte kalika posa. Bente ke bonsa. Hallelujah. Now, there is a heavy unction for healing. Please, the ministers, quickly, let's just do this. I love this part of the miracle service because this is when mass miracles happen. We'll do this just for two minutes. Pastor Williams, yes. Listen, as we begin to pray, you will get confirmations of your answered prayer, either by the ministry of the Holy Spirit or impartations to your families as soon as we begin to pray i assure you pastor suleiman come pastor steve come quickly hallelujah as we begin to pray let's pray in the unity of faith instrumentalists help us lord release miracles release miracles sign Impossible situation, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God. I'm not afraid. Let everything that was said. I'm not afraid. He is again. 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 of many Lord precious father we ask that in the name of Jesus Christ we ask that the fire of God will come upon this let it rise before you like an incense we release answers to prayers in the name of Jesus we release answers to requests in the name of Jesus we command doors to be open we command healings we command liberations in the name of Jesus Christ let the breakthrough of God come let the angels of God be released right this moment in the name of Jesus. We ask that answers be released. Answers be released in the name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. Ministers, please. We're going to hold our hands as I prophesy. We'll do it in the unity of faith. The corporate anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to begin to make declarations we're holding hands i'm not just prophesying i want you to believe it please believe please believe please believe oh this is where ancient doors get opened believe worshipers help me i want to pray right now in the name of jesus for your academics 
every student in this place go forward excel excel shake it excel supernatural intelligence supernatural intelligence supernatural intelligence ideas in the name of Jesus ideas in the name of Jesus go forward no more failure no more failure no more carry over 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 we release five points I said five points five points five points first class in the name of Jesus yes you will excel yes you will excel I pray right now therefore God even thy God has anointed thee with an oil of gladness that oil that distinguishes you everyone under the sound of my voice Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Let it set you apart. Set you apart in your office, in your department, in your ministry, in your business, in your home. Set them apart. I pray right now of you in business or finance or any corporate work but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty a new level of inspiration like the dew of Hammon for your families I command dying businesses come alive dry bones live again dry bones live again dry bones live again Hallelujah. Changfa prophesied there is an unusual release of jobs and of opportunities. You may not need it, but your loved ones. How many of you are tired of praying for your loved ones for jobs? Now is the time. Lift your hands. As surely as the Lord lives, in the name that is above other names, whether it's job change, new jobs, right now in the name that is above other names i command for you and for your loved ones receive it in the name of jesus miracle jobs miracle jobs jobs without your interview yes i prophesy i prophesy under the unction of the holy one of israel under the corporate anointing of the servants of the living god barrenness barrenness enough is enough barrenness for yourself and for your loved ones the bible says weep not now that it's not there for many are the children of the body than the children of others with child i command miracle children now miracle children everybody move be open everybody move be open everyone with 
not a womb. We create a new womb right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called delay in your life. Whether in marriage, whether in relationship, whether in your job. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahas. I pray right now. I command speed to your life. Speed to your life. Before December, you will accomplish more than you have accomplished. Before December, I prophesy. Before December, before December. Supernatural restoration. And I will restore. I hear my spirit. Marriage is before December. I don't know what this means, but I speak as, as I hear. Marriage is before December. Out of the Lord speaks, and His hands will bring it to pass. And I will restore to you the years that the canker wore. What have you lost in your life? I want to prophesy to you right now. The Bible says that the Shunammite woman, the king, asked that, they sh that she should go back and sevenfold was restored to her. I don't care what you have lost. I command a restoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. every uncompleted project in this place whether it's a house your parents are building whether it's i don't care what it is if it has been done by man then there is no limitation for you i pray right now the resources to complete every project i release it in the name of jesus <laughs> That when men say there is a casting down we speak over your life your testimony from tonight is that there is a lifting up i command a lifting up arise shine arise shine arise shine A new level of the understanding of the word of God a new level he brought to Jeremiah and he said eat it and after he ate it he said now go and speak I command right now especially to ministers of the gospel unusual fellowship with the Holy Ghost unusual fellowship Unusual dreams, unusual impartation, visions of the night, visions of the day, angelic visitation, throne room encounter. Let there be a sharpening of the gifts of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. every life here that represents a wilderness in the name of jesus let that wilderness tonight be
counted for a forest be counted for a forest every tongue that rises up against you in judgment i don't care where it is job chapter 5 he said you shall be delivered from the scourging tongues of men i pray that everywhere they talk about you they will speak for good they will speak for good they will speak for good for uncommon favor that anointing that was upon Esther that anointing that opens doors that no man can explain not even you the recipient that anointing that will attract strangers and cause them to feed your flock and cause that your gates be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I invoke that anointing of favor upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Grace to obey the word of God. I terminate fear from your life. Now, I terminate fear from your life. Let there be no fear. I command a wellspring of joy. Let the fountain of joy that is not based on circumstances be opened from your spirit, man. That river of joy, let it flow from within you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. listen to me the bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest one of the greatest miracles that will happen in this place is the rest from sin the bible says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life hallelujah no matter what healing and what miracle has happened in this place, the greatest of all miracles is salvation. Hallelujah. The greatest of all miracles. Inside and outside, you are listening to me right now. And the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Everybody rise up on your feet just once and you sit down. You're here and you've not made up a decision for Jesus Christ. You may be a Christian. You may be a nice person inside and outside. Your friends have been talking to you about this Jesus. And the Holy Spirit keeps convicting you that there is room for a new life. Whether you've given your heart to the Lord before and you backslid it and just left the path of God. Or this is your first decision. Inside and outside, the love of the Master calls you right now. I want you to leave your seat and run and come out. Leave your seat right now. And make a decision for Jesus Christ. Don't sit back there. You've made a decision once. Don't be ashamed of anybody. It's a blessing. Inside and outside, run. Leave your seat and come. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Jesus calls you. You are welcome. We welcome you with the love of the Father. Appreciating them. Come on. Outside, we are still waiting for you. Appreciate them. As they come, this meeting was put for you. We love you. You are welcome. Welcome home. Welcome home. Those of you outside, as the Holy Ghost convicts you, don't look at your friends. Leave them and run and come. This is the greatest decision. I don't care what it is you have done or what you have not done. No man condemns you. There is love for you tonight. For God so loved you. We are still waiting. The Holy Ghost is still convicting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
listen to me. Those of you in front, I salute you and I congratulate you for making this bold decision. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I want to tell you, welcome home. Hallelujah. As a family of faith, as the church of the living God, we receive you and we welcome you. This is a bold decision. Every one of us had to make this decision. Hallelujah. Now I want to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my privilege and honor to lead you to the one who died for us. The one who is alive and lives forever. That at the end of our journey in this life, there is one who will dwell in his presence forever. Thank you for making this decision. Say after me, Lord Jesus. It's not a poem. Say it from your heart. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. Tonight, I accept you as my Savior. Be the Lord of my life. I hand over my life to you. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. And I denounce sin and Satan. I receive eternal life into my spirit. A new life begins for me. In the name of Jesus, I am born again. The Spirit of God lives in me. I am heaven bound. And I will live a victorious life here on earth. Please appreciate them, saints of God. Thank you very much. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.